Okay, we back at it. I love these conversations with my brother because he is the definition of a rapper evolved. This is what grown man talk sounds like. This is what grown up hip hop sounds like. This is what hip hop, hip hoppers with mortgages sound like. Ah. Please welcome back to Vlad TV, my man, my brother, young Jock. Jock, what up? Yes, what's up, my brother? Thank you for that opening. That was magnifico. <laughs> But that's real talk. I love our conversations because you're so insightful and um, you just bring a lot of in-depth perspective to so many things going on in our community and around the world. But before I get yeah. started, yo, Jock, you've been trending a lot lately. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, you went viral. You, you, where was you at? Atlanta Hawk game or something? Like, you you went viral. Man, I was, yeah, I was just one of the special uh, guests for the night at the Hawks game. And I went viral because I'm sitting there just having, you know, I had one or two, feeling good. <laughs> I eat, and as I turn around, bro, I see Harry the Hawk standing in front of me with a get me on Vlad TV sign. And I was like, did Vlad them do this? I'm like, where did this come from? <laughs> and I'm really caught up because I'm like, what? That just lets me know how, how, uh, how huge this platform is, man. Speaking of them, I man, it was so cool. I tried to get him to get a few shots with me. He was like, I can't drink. I was like, all right, you know, man. So I ain't offer him no more alcohol. But I did. I said, you know what? You showed that kind of love. I could actually bring you on Vlad TV. So I I actually brought him with me today. Stop. Yeah. Harry. Are Hall you me. serious? Yeah. Oh, yo, <laughs> yeah. holy. Harry. Yo, Jock, you wasn't even playing with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my, yo, Harry, what up? Yo, first and foremost, this, this ain't this ain't your homeboy with a with a. <laughs> you made it. Yo, moment. this is not your homeboy with a Hawks mascot uniform. Or is, is this a real Harry? No, this is the real Harry the Hawk. This is this is Harry, authentic, genuine. Okay. <laughs> okay, Harry, you made it. You're here. You you got your you got your, your 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 five minutes of fame on Vlad. So so I'm gonna throw some questions for you. All right? Are you the best dancer in the NBA? <laughs> My boy gets down. Oh. My boy gets down. Uh, 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 uh. I fire his ass. Oh, yeet, yeet, yeet. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. My boy. My boy on it. Okay. Yeah. You on Vlad TV, so I gotta ask you the real. Like, let's get serious for a second. The Bulls mascot was caught with some illegal substances a while ago. Word on the streets is you was the one who snitched. Any truth to that? Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, man. I don't even, I I don't know where you got these words from. I don't know. I don't even know how he would even okay. think you would be the one to participate in something like that. I don't even know why. Why would you ask him that? I, I'm just telling y'all what I heard. All right. Um, are you single? It's a lot. It's a lot of women out there who like to know: Is Harry the Hawk single? If you're not, you know your wife gonna watch this. Everybody watch Vlad TV. It's a lot of birds want to get down, my boy. There you go, Jock. There's a whole lot of birds who want to get down. Yo, you know something? Now that I'm thinking about it, you are in a very, very popular position. Do mascots have groupies? <laughs> ah, okay. Cause I, you know what? I wanted the same thing, man. I, I should, I could have been asked you that. I, I, I don't even know why I didn't ask you that. I can see it. I can see it. I mean, I ain't no groupie or nothing like that. But I really was excited when I saw you like get me on Vlad. I was like, oh my god! Like this is a moment. You know what I mean? Yeah. It happens, man. All right. I you again, you on Vlad. I got I gotta ask you, I gotta keep it a hundred percent. You know, it's out there. I read it in a very, very legitimate um publication. 
and it said that you are the second highest paid mascot in the league. I, you're making hundreds of thousands of dollars. How much truth is it to that? <laughs> I, I was oh, he's out now. Leave? Bro, you leave? Hold up, it's getting... <laughs> what? I thought he knew you was going to ask questions that he might not want to answer. I mean, that's... <laughs> <laughs> I heard he's making a lot of money. Yo, shout to my man. Yeah, hey, man, shout out to Harry. How much you heard he's making? I heard he's making a whole lot of, like, Harry McClan, a uh, half a mil or something like that. Something crazy. I don't know who's under that mask, but Harry ain't doing too bad. Yo, that was fun. <laughs> shout to my man, Harry the Hawk. That was very spontaneous, <laughs> man. I, You know. I, f I was honored to have Harry the Hog here with me, man. You know what I'm saying? Because we be balling. Straight up. Straight up. <laughs> nah. Yo, shout out to my man, Harry. Fun segment. Um, yo, Jock, let's get serious for yeah. a second. There's a lot going on in the world, and we got to start off with the obvious. Um, Tory Lane and Megan Thee Stallion trial just got underway. I think we on day two. Yo, this is... It, this is must watch TV. Like, like this right here is turning into one of the bombshells that you can't wait to hear what happened. What, what's your thoughts on what's going on so far? What's really interesting, man, you know, you know, everybody wants to be an internet detective or an internet judge, an internet lawyer. You know, we've all watched this unfold on social media platforms, you know, um, and everyone speculates because they're taking what little information they have or believe to have and they're trying to formulate what what the synopsis was as far as how the whole incident played out. Um, <clears throat> but interesting enough, man, these op the opening statements were crazy. Crazy. Um, this was the best movie that I never <laughs> watched. I hate to say it, you know what I'm saying? Because we're talking about a, a woman who was uh, shot in the foot. We're talking about someone who's looking at spending uh, a quarter of a century. Century, yeah. Behind bars. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's nothing to make fun of or like, you know, to say the least. But, I mean, damn. We we listening. It's like you, it's like you tuned in listening to a, a, a movie or something on the radio because you just, people are only giving you, like, you can either read it or someone's coming out commentating what happened. Um, but a lot has been exposed. A lot has been exposed. Yo, a Jock, lot of details. Was you not like like all of us, and I'm sure you was caught off like the way that the the prosecution and the defense came out guns blazing. They ain't wasting no time. Nah. Out the gate, they talking about love triangle. Like this is a soap opera for real. Love triangles between Tori, Megan, and Megan's best friend Kelsey. They bringing Ben Simmons into this thing, the baby into it. Like, yo, uh, Kelsey was having an affair with, with Ben Simmons and the baby. And then Megan went behind her and had, you know, a, a little something with them too as yeah, well. Like yeah. all kinds of craziness is going on. Well, honestly, um, being an entertainer myself, I've seen a lot of things unfold right, right, boom, there. And it's like, Nobody's ever gonna believe this. You know what I'm saying? He's like, no, no, nobody gonna believe this. So, hearing hearing some of these uh, new details, the new details that are finally <laughs> being made public, um, someone had kind of told me some stuff that was going on a while back, and I never really spoke on it, even after hearing about it, because I was just like, look, man, when they go to trial, we're gonna hear everything. If we don't see it, we'll hear it. And here it is, man. I'm just really, I'm, the only thing that got me caught off guard is, the, the one thing that's got me caught off guard is, everybody's been wanting to call, say Meg is lying. Everybody's been wanting to say Tory shot her. But I think this case is gonna, I, I think the whole prosecution in this case is gonna, it's gonna play out on Kelsey. It's, it's down to her, it's down to her. She's that one variable in this equation that make you stop for a second. And it kind of takes your attention and focus off of Meg and Tori. And you're like, what role did you play in this all? 
You know what I mean? Now, granted, by the time we see this, I'm pretty sure we'll have a deliberation in this case. Who knows? I mean, but you just uh, hit the nail on the head. It's really going to come down to Kelsey. But they're saying that Kelsey and Tory had gunshot residue on both of their hands. So from a defense standpoint, you could see where they're going with this. Either she's the one who shot her friend or her and Tory was fighting over the gun and it just went off. And that's why both her and Tory got gunshot residue on it. So you're absolutely right. It's, she's the pivotal part of this equation. Man, it's getting ugly out here. I mean, you know, just from hearing bits and pieces of it, it definitely sounds like once he exposed the situation of what had been going on behind uh, uh, Meg's back or Kelsey's back, however it went, I think that would have created a, a real volatile situation in such a close uh, close space as, as a vehicle, you know what I'm saying? And for things to go left and to say that there's a gun involved, you just never know. I, so I don't want to speculate on that part because right now it is it's down to the wire in that case. And I, so I, I just feel like somewhere in there, somebody was like, hey, let's, we don't need to bring this gun into this. I think the gun went off. Not even, I don't think the gun was probably ever aimed at Meg, uh, but I don't know who to say, but it sounds like the gun went off and once it discharged, fragments when the bullet hit the ground, phew, ricochet. Because let's be for real, I would have expected more damage if she got shot directly in the foot. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cast, you know, broken foot, you know, bones in the foot, shattered bones. You know, you're talking about fragments opposed to a full, metal jacket of a bullet or even if it was a hollow hollow point, you know what I'm saying? Because for them to say fragments, it makes me think that it may have been a hollow point so when it hit the ground, when it mushroomed, maybe it, you know, when it's separate ways like shrapnel and that's why it's in a foot, like, you know. But I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's just sticking with Kelsey for a second. They're saying allegedly she was going to originally testify for Tory. But then when she found out that they were going to use her as part of the defense, like, yo, she had gunshot residue on her hand, too. She switched over and now she's going to testify on behalf of Meg. So she really, really is caught in a, in a situation. We think she's caught in a situation at the end of the day. Who, 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 who does her loyalty lie with the most? Who she long, who who has she known the longest in this equation? She's been Meg's friend longer. You know what I'm saying? You know, Tori just kind of came along, it appears, you know, and, you know, some pillow talking was taking place. You know, people get over that. People get over that. You know, I, I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that Kelsey did this. I'm not saying Kelsey didn't do this. I'm just saying that somewhere in there, uh, it's a lot involving Kelsey. That's what I'm gonna say. Kelsey, 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 Kelsey. I just gotta say, but it. you know something? Yeah, there is, I mean, you're you're 100 right. Um, but it's something else for us to think about. And I think it was, you know, and again, like you said, um, one person, meaning Meg, she was shot, um, in her foot, and Tori is looking at a quarter of a century behind bars. So none of this is, is anything to take lightly. But I think that the defense is going to have a field day. Um, and I think it was such a poor move on Megan's part when she did that interview with Gail King. Um, she, she denied having a relationship, um, an intimate relationship with Tory. And the defense is going to pounce all over that and say, yo, if you can't believe her there, you can't believe none of this. So I'm sure they're going to play that card. Yeah, because right, somewhere in there, you know, let's be honest. You don't want to put too much of your business out there if you don't have to. You get what I'm trying to say? Um, and, and, and I think that was the move at that point. Her posturing on that was more like, look, I don't want to put all that out there for, for there to be more speculation about a relationship with he and I. 
that's dead. I don't, I don't even want the world to know about that. Just look, I got shot in the foot. I believe he did it. It's kind of happened like that. But again, it, it opens up the door for reasonable doubt. You know what I'm saying? It's like, well, we have a reason to feel like you could be lying here because you went in front of the world. Um, you know, you went in front of the world and you, you didn't tell the truth. It's chestnut checkers, so, you know. I think it's gonna you know, I think crazy. it's gonna hurt her. I think it hurt her. Yeah, but because, you know, Gail pinned her down in that interview. She she literally waited for an answer. Did you have a sexual relationship with Tori? And she said no. I I don't know how that's gonna play out in this trial, brother. Well, let's say this. But Let's say this, okay? Mm -hmm. That was Gail King in that interview, correct? Correct. That wasn't a judge. The play, the, the 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 prosecution wasn't there. There were no jury. She was not sworn in. So, <laughs> you know, depending on how they played that with that in this trial, I don't know, because it's not like she was on trial. And she told a lie. Hey, they asked about it. She wanted to keep that element of her reality in the cut. But it, it, it comes back to hunt you because then people want to, they want to discredit you for not being truthful or forthcoming. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Well, speaking of people who are denying <laughs> Being in relationships, your man Ben Simmons came out with a quickness. What quick? <laughs> like, what me? What me? I'm talking about who? Can you imagine him waking up? Imagine him getting out <laughs> the gym. Ah, oh man, oh good workout. Grab the phone. He got 300 new text messages, 4,000 <laughs> missed calls. He look and see his little the little Instagram uh, little logo, and that joint got 3,000 with an X next to it. Like what? Like, huh? I, I, uh-uh. Because -uh. who's, who's to say? I, I should have looked into it. Is he married? Is Ben Simmons married? Does he have a girlfriend? I don't know. Have a real relationship? I do not know. Because you know I'm what's sure so interesting? with somebody. Here lately, here lately, these basketball players been getting kind of outed, you know. Mm -hmm. Kanye said that about your mans and Kim, who, Chris Paul uh -huh. and Kim. Yep, it was yep, like, yep, yep. like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Now here it is, Ben Simmons getting thrown under the bus. Hey, Ben. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> right under the bus, man. I mean, damn. Yo, I'm telling you, it sucks. I mean, you know, God bless people who are in the public eye, but it sucks. You could wake up at any given moment and your name is just involved in something you ain't got a damn thing to do with. Man, so bad. Crazy. So quick. Quick. And depending on what type of endorsements you have, you understand what I'm saying? Depending on your image, yep. your likeness, yep. that could that could throw all types of monkey wrenches in your plans, man. Just being, just an accusation, you know? An accusation can change the whole scope of what you got going on. And it's unfortunate, but he hurry up and backpedal out of that. No, 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 I, I, don't, I don't even know. <laughs> but I don't think that, well, let's just say this. Apparently, that's what Tori said, correct? That she had slept with Ben Simmons, right? <clears throat> well, that could have been pillow talking coming from that end of Kelsey. Tori could have probably felt like it was true, and he threw it out there and said it, and it could not be true. And Ben's like, nah, I, I, nah, I never, I don't know. She could have been feeding him something, you know what I'm saying? You know, people will, will feed you, uh, uh, people will fabricate to your face to make themselves seem uh, objects appear larger in the mirror. You get, you kind of get what I'm saying? <laughs> People will, will boost their they, they situation up more, so we don't know. But I do know that's a hell of an allegation to wake up to. Like, God damn. Nah, damn sure is. Um, you know, how you think this thing's going to end? Real talk. I'm going to be honest with you. Um... From what it sounds like, it it doesn't really sound complicated to me. To be to be 
just straightforward. I'm going to just say this, okay? I made a bet with Miss Shanika and Shouty Shouty on my morning show, right? That if Tori is found guilty, I'll shave my head. I'll shave my whole head ball. Are you serious? Yes. But I told Shanika, if Tori innocent, she got to come to work with the braids that be under the weave. You can't get them fresh. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. I need the weave <laughs> pat down braids, the, the Beyonce pat my weave braids. I want she got to come to work like that. So I can't wait to see how this video turned out. Either way, um, this is a very unfortunate situation. And, and again, you know, um, just through through the eyes of watching it, you know, I, I don't ever want anyone to feel like I'm making fun of their situation because it's very unfortunate, man. And it's, and it's very bad for our culture. You know what I'm saying? But I pray that um, this plays out fair. I, I, pr I pray that it plays out fair and that justice is served because if if justice is served, then that means that if whoever did this, they got to be dealt with. You know what I'm saying? Or whoever lied about this happening got to be dealt with. You know what I'm saying? However that falls. I'm not pointing a finger at any of these people. I'm not an attorney. I'm not the judge. I'm not a juror. I'm simply... <laughs> A, a person, a, I'm on standby. I'm a, spe a spectator at this moment. That's it. Because I, I, I wasn't there. And I'm not in the courtroom either. So I don't know. We'll definitely know in a, in, in a few how, how it plays out. Okay, so I got to ask you, why do you think he'll be acquitted? Is it just enough reasonable doubt for you? Yes, yeah, a lot of elements that were left out because of the way of the opening. When you heard the opening, what is it? The opening statements? It was Correct. just like, yo... He got mad because she said something. Well, allegedly, Tori got upset because Meg said his music sucked. And they said he jumped out the car and said, dance, bitch, and shoot out of foot. I don't know, but that sounds like something out of a bad movie, a low-budget movie. <laughs> um, then there were moments when they asked Meg, when she looked back, where was Kelsey? She didn't know where Kelsey was, but she was able to look back and see that Tori was standing over the vehicle. And they asked, well, was he standing on something to be over the vehicle or was he just standing there? And she said, I don't know. I just know he was over the vehicle. And it's like, well, how tall is he? And she says, five, five. Even though they say clearly he's taller than that. So if you're that cognizant of what's going on, how can you not place where she was? Cause she couldn't say, she, she wasn't able to determine if he was in the front seat of the vehicle or the back seat of the vehicle. Kind of get what I'm saying? The passenger side from where, from where she was saying he no, shot I'm from. following you. So, I, you know, I just, I'm not saying he's going to be acquitted. I don't know what's going to happen. I, I, I really don't. But when you listen to it, man, you see it happen so much, man. It sounds like they got into it. It sounds like Kelsey got pissed off because, you know, he, he he pulled that moment right there. Like, whoop, whoop. Like, why would you do that? Sound like she might have said some shit to him. Temples flared. I feel like it probably was a tussle and gun was right there present. So he might've been trying to move that out the way. And when he moved, grabbed to move it out the way, she might've thought, oh, he about to use it in a in panic mode. You know what I'm saying? Now they both holding, he like, what you doing? And he trying to pull away because now he feel like she trying to grab the gun from him and shoot him with it. And before you know it, mm -hmm. pow, it go off. And as I said, I believe a bullet ricochet and fragments hit uh, Meg in the foot. I just, that's just, that's just my theory, my, my you know, my, Cause I could be wrong nah, as hell. I get it. We could be wrong as hell. Well, you know, there is a lot of reasonable doubt so far, but you know, I think we all waiting to see how this play out, and I and I pray it it works out for um, whoever, you know, it should work out for. So hopefully, the story from either side is true and it works out in their favor. All right, switch topics for a second. You are you a football fan? I'm all right. I mean, okay. I'm, I can't. I can't just run down. Oh no, you know he went to he went to uh, Georgia State back in. Uh, I, I, I ain't gonna be able to follow it, all the little details, but let's get into it. Okay, you familiar with a man named Tom Brady? Yeah, of course. Who plays for the Bucks? The Bucks have they got a losing season. They they they're six and seven so far. 
So one of my favorite shows, Undisputed, Shannon Sharp, um, my man Skip Bayless. Shannon is a three-time Super Bowl winner. Mm -hmm. um, he's in the Hall of Fame. He was expressing his opinion about Tom not playing up to Tom's potential this year. They're having a losing season. Tom Brady's 45. And Skip Bayless lost it. And he really kind of went in on Shannon for – expressing his opinion. I mean, went in so much that he actually, you know, told him, Tom Brady is better than you in the sport that you played. And it got personal. It got heated. It got deep on live TV. Yeah. A lot of people came out, um, people like Jalen Rose, who has gotten into it with Skip Bayless in the past. Um, so many of the fans and was like, you know, Skip is out of line for what he said. Do you think Skip was out of line or as a sports analyst, um, come, he's right? Come on, man. At the end of the day, let's – why? you know what, man? We are so sensitive these days. Like, that's what men do. That's we, we, we express our opinion and we stand on it. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes it could be offensive. Hell, the sport of football is offensive. That's why it's offense and a defense. It gets mm -hmm. like that. That's why they talk about the gridiron. You talking about a high-impact contact sport. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, man, who cares? Skip said what he said. He felt how he felt. Um, that's what guys do. That's what they do. They ain't no different than when you hear – Barkley and, and, and Shaq them talking about somebody. Like, you you express your opinion, and that's what it is. Now, a lot of times people come with their opinion, and they try to, uh, you know, dress their opinion up as if it's a fact because they come with a little fact-checking along the way, too. You know what I'm saying? You drop a little fact sitting up with your opinion of somebody, and they try to make that law. And that's just what it is. Skip, I'm pretty sure, is a, um, a fan of Brady. That's what it sounds like. He believes in him. That's my guy. I'm gonna stand by him. That's just what it is. That ain't nothing. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure Shannon. He may have. He may have acted like he was offended, but it was good for TV. We talking about it. No, Shannon was definitely offended. It, it, it ain't no question. Shannon was offended, and he, you know he was offended from the standpoint, Jock, of yo, I do this show with you, right? Right. It's me and you sitting across the table from one another. Right. Just as you have your opinion. I got my opinion, and right. I'm not even hating on this man. Right. I'm saying as a fellow peer of Tom Brady, I played the sport. I'm in the Hall of Fame, so I'm qualified to actually One say what I'm saying. One of those guys. He's pissed that Skip took offense to what he was saying. Like it, I could understand if I never played the sport. You didn't. You didn't play it, Skip. I did. So if I am literally calling this man out, I got the credentials to do that. And just as you're saying, like, you know, this is what men do. We all go to the barbershop. Everybody got an opinion. Somebody, and and everybody's was, somebody standing on it. Correct. I mean, at the end of correct. the day, at the end of the day, it's it's a certain um it's a certain level of <laughs> you know, respect that got to be the when you got somebody who's adamant about something. And apparently, Skip Bayless is adamant about his opinion on Tom Brady. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes people, let's just be for real, sometimes it's called loyalty to a fault. You know, you loyal to a fault. And it's like, I'm so down with you even when you wrong, I'm going to say you right. Hey, man, the man has not been having his best season at 45, still in the game. You know what I'm trying to say? That's the truth. You, there's nothing you can say around it about. That's what it is. No matter how many great days he's had. Hey, Skip, today the guy's not having a good day. And that's it. And that's the part that probably offended Shannon so much. more. like, man, hold up. I'm just stating the facts. How is you getting pissed off with me? Hell is wrong you with go. you, Skip. That's just what it is. So, Skip, hey, man, drank you some ginger ale, my boy. 
kick your feet up, <laughs> roll your one, take it easy. Come up off the gas a little, my boy. Shannon, it's going to be okay. Hit you a little black and mild like you do on the side and just keep it moving. Okay, uh, I want to bring something that's a little closer to home. Uh-oh. Uh, your boy Diddy. <laughs> Love. Love. Puff Daddy. He, I, I mean, this guy's still out here doing his thing, sowing his wild oats. Diddy is showing him, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm still Diddy. Yeah. I, I still do what I do. Yeah. 53 years old, just had a baby. Cool. Made an announcement out of nowhere. Right. So your boy Academics, who's a friend to this channel, mm -hmm. um, you know, he did what Academics does. He came out with a tweet and he basically said, yo, Diddy had a side baby on all of his side chicks. And I just want to read because I want to make sure, like, like, I don't misquote his words. He said, my nigga done effed around and had a side baby on his harem of side chicks. Brother Love is a real one. Mm -hmm. And you know all hell broke loose. <laughs> so before we get to all that came back, what do you even think about that? I mean, let's just be straight up, man. This man living his, his life how he wants to, okay? He's not married, and um, we don't know the extent of his relationships. You know, it's, it's his cornucopia of women. We don't know how many women this man got, you know what I'm saying? I remember uh, just telling Shy, she trying to tell me, oh, this is a mystery, baby. It's a mystery to you. It ain't a mystery to him. Mm -hmm. He knew what the hell he was doing, when he was doing it, why he was doing it, and who he was doing it too. So at the end of the day, man, it's your world, baby. Do, what you, do as you please. If that's what he want to do, he don't got to answer to nobody but him, God, that baby, and possibly the baby mama. And that's just what it is. Nah, that's so real. Um, you know, first and foremost, Puff got six kids. Takes care, and, and and he really takes care of all his children. We know that. Um, we got seven now, right? He got seven now. He got seven now. But here's the deal: he got the money to take care of him. If he, if he want to make a baby at this age, God bless him. Yeah, you know, God bless him. But. You know that statement that academic made. It, it was not gonna go unquestioned. Oh, the side and chick. It definitely wasn't. Oh, oh, yeah, the side chick thing. Yeah, you know, right away, young Miami caught wind of it and fired back. And basically, she was like, "I'm nobody's side B. Um, just make that clear on this Good Monday. I don't come second to no bees out there." So, her and academics went back and forth and they really set this internet thing on fire. Yeah. Well, you know. cause it was the latest, what, what? And it was like, like you said, clearly it was out the blue, but you know, um, love, brother love also um, came to his defense as well as uh, young Miami's defense and say that she is not my side chick, has never been and never will be. Uh, and you know, you are gonna get hurt talking about a plan with mine, whatever, whatever. She's my shawty wop. <laughs> Did he say shorty wop or shawty wop? Shawty wop. Okay. Now, at that moment, at that moment, things got a, a little more fuzzier for me, a little hazier, I should say. Because I was like, wait a minute, well, she's not a side chick, but she's a shawty wop. What is a shawty wop? <laughs> Love, please call us up right now. What is a shawty wop? Hey, do me a favor. In the comments, leave your definition of shawty wop. Wrong answers only. Sheesh. <laughs> Sheesh. I think I'd be like, whoa, 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 whoa. Diddy, what is a shawty wop? What are you calling me? Like, I thought my would have said something about that, but you know, that's their thing. It's their little love language. And hey, they like it. They, 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 they 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 love it. I, I'm happy for them. I'm, I'm hey, what can I what can I say? You like it? I love uh, it. Whatever's going on in their world, they both understand it. They both good with it, and God bless them. Period. Point blank. All right. Um, it seemed like every time me and you sit down, 
this next name I'm about to mention keeps coming up and it feels like it keeps getting worse. Um, do you want to take a guess at who I'm about to speak on? Just one guess that come to mind. Does it have anything to do with the spectrum? What's the spectrum? When you're considered autistic. No, it, it, if that has something to do with mental illness, maybe. Who are we speaking I, of? I'm, t- I'm talking about the con to the yay. He's back at it. You know, this man is making it. He's making it so hard because I understand he has he deals with with you know health mental health issues. We're, we're all aware of that, but the way he is attacking people in our community, he makes it so hard to to stomach him and to say his name without being personally offended right as people of color he, you know he basically said um rosa parks was a plant um and this upset a lot of people in the community boosie another friend to this channel yep. he put out a tweet and said you know it's a shame that this man is really trying to take away all the black glory Who's next? Martin Luther King's? Blacks should do him just like the Jews did. You know, I'm going to tell you something, man, that was an eye-opener for me. You know, the fact that as we sit back and we're watching him uh, tear down or discredit people or even this debunk things we think we know right it's kind of like the same thing that he's doing this is my just my point of view it's it's the the very thing we're seeing him do to people he's doing it to himself in real time because everything he's worked hard to be his brand um the whole thought of yay is like it's huge but with what he's doing to other people is as if he's making a mockery of himself. And it and it's like it's it's tarnishing everything he's worked for. Just as he's said some things that may uh be offensive and uh it feels as if he's tarnishing other people of our culture, uh, of history, is tarnishing their legacy. You know what I'm saying? Or as you would say, putting shade on it, putting tarnish on it. And it just, it's, a, it's the same thing to me. So when I see it, you know, my concern is how far is this going to go? You know, we people are like, he need help. He need help. Maybe he's devised a plan in his head. Maybe it's working perfectly. Who knows? I don't know, man. But I'm going to tell you the truth about something. Um, a few days ago, uh, I lost a, good, a close friend of mine um, to an aneurysm, my brother Sola. And uh, it's so amazing because while praying for him, I ask myself, is there anything else I need to pray for while I'm praying for him after, after I, you know, I left the hospital? And as I was sitting there saying that, I heard something come on the radio, and I heard Kanye's name, and I turned the radio down, and I prayed for Kanye too. I did. I did because this is sad. You know, when, when someone becomes the villain, um, no one weeps for the villain, for real, for real, because we hope the villain gets what he deserves. But I'm kind of weeping for this particular villain as he's villainizing himself right now because I'm like, damn, bro, like, you worked so hard, you've come so far, you know, you've opened our eyes to some very good things, but now you just, you, you're going, it's like you're working up uphill now. You're going against everything that you've you've established. And I just, I feel so bad for him because I really want him to just stop and just take a break, get back to himself, figure out, you know, you know, you zero out, recenter. And, 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 and when you come back, come back with um, maybe better energy, man. I don't know. Because I, I, I don't want to, you know how they say, don't kick some, a man when he's down. And I think that's what's happening right now. But he's also kicking himself. Other people are kicking him while he's down, but he's kicking himself. Some people don't feel like he's down because he's still got hundreds of millions of dollars. And that is true. But 
when you start thinking of your legacy and what he's worked hard again to achieve, you lose one point something billion dollars in a day for for doing too much talking. Somewhere in there, somebody within you, <laughs> that one of those different facets of yay, got to tell yay, hey, let's rethink this for a second. Fall back. Let's 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 think this out. But if he is a person and he's determined to, as we've said, sacrifice himself to get his message out, then you just got to sit back and watch him continue to uh, implode and um, evolve into a whole nother being, man. Because I just I just don't I don't feel good about the situation right now. It's like you say, it's, you're ruffling feathers on both sides of the fence or just all the way around because it's more than just a two-sided fence. Um, and I just I just want to see him, I want to see him chill out for a minute. I want to see him just chill out, man. Go back to the drawing board. Come back with a better version of the one that's being presented right now. You know, Jock, that is why I love sitting down with you. Um, the way you just laid that out was so poignant um, and so insightful. It really was. And, you know, I, I, Kanye's just making it so hard. Hard. To, 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 to like him, to be on his side, to... to but like you said, he need this is somebody who needs prayer. You know, I've gone through my cycles myself with this, right? So pissed off because the legacy that he had, the music, the the hit records, um the genius level in terms of fighting, like really fighting to get into that fashion industry breaking down the doors that he did to get in and then making those Yeezys what they become that that's not easy and in the way he believed in himself the whole ride before he got his first record deal nobody wanted to sign him he fought for that first record deal people looked at him as a producer laughed at him as a rapper and he changed everybody's mind man did he I what you know that I'm telling the truth and to see what he's become and to see the level of hate that he continues to spew against everybody, including his own. I, you know, you're right. This is somebody who needs prayer. And I really pray that he gets the help that he needs because this, the way it's going, Jock, it don't feel like it's going to end well for him. It just doesn't. Um, and I really pray, and, and I'm saying this openly, I, I, I pray that he gets the help that he needs. But I also think we need to stop giving this man attention. Uh, well, it's it's kind of hard to. It's, it's hard to. You know, it's, it's, it's hard to. You know, you, you, you. If a family member decides to step away from the family and they begin to act out. The family should not turn their back on them because the family shouldn't turn their back on that family member because he's still a representation of the family. He's still us. Let's be for real. He's etched in the history in, 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 of our culture. He's etched in that. It's, 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 you can't erase that. You can't rewrite. You can't write them out. You know, it's just it's what it is. Um, I just don't. I I, I don't want to. I don't want us to turn our back on him. You know what I'm saying? Not for real. Because some of the stuff in his message should not be condemned. Because some of the things he has said and says, I think he's spot on. But I said in the last interview, prayers that. He confuses us. He continues to confuse us. And it's almost like a, a, a self-sabotage. It's something that he's doing that in his mind, it's working for a greater cause. Whether he reveals it now or later, in his mind, it may be set up just like that. So again, man, I, I'm, I'm gonna stop. I don't, I don't wanna kick the man while he down. Um, 
I want to just uplift them in prayer, man. And I just hope that, you know, it, things level out and we can just get back to a a safer space. Because I do feel like he's in uh, unsafe territory. Yeah, he's in upstate territory. And um, to your point, you know, long before the world knew of Rosa Parks, there was a young 15-year-old girl named Claudette Colvin. And she was actually the first young lady arrested um, for refusing to give up her seat and not go to the back of the bus. Um, you know, Rosa Parks was a member of the Montgomery chapter of the NAACP, and they, they, you know, came up with a plan to bring light to what was going on down there. But still, sometimes the way you deliver a message, I put it this way. I, I, I think this is a man that I don't, it, it feels like it's so much hate coming out of him from the way he treated his ex-wife um, and publicly going at her to to all his anti-Semitic rhetoric to all of the stuff he said about uh, you know people of color and African Americans in partic particular talking about slavery was a choice and all of those things. I, I, he needs he, I, and this is just Sean's opinion. I think he needs to be silenced. I I, I really do. Um, you know, if we don't turn our back on him, we need to. Mute this man. Stop reporting on him. Stop talking about him. Even though you and I are having this conversation right now, um, put him in exile somewhere. We don't have to turn our back on him, but let this man, let this man be regular again. And, and is he and on stop. medication? Is he on some type of medication? I don't know. I hope he needs to be. I don't know. But you know, again, it, it almost feels like. He has so much self-hatred and he's lashing out at everybody. I'm not sure if you heard uh, the, the, the clubhouse conversation that he joined. And for no reason, just laughs at Meek Mill. You know, just the thought of Meek Mill being in a conversation with him, laughs at him. So again, you know, we talked about people in the public eye waking up and all of a sudden their name is in the conversation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Meek is somewhere with his child and, and he's literally getting 300 texts to his phone or something. Kanye's going after him. It's no surprise because anybody that has had a, uh, a meeting or fling, even if Kanye made it up in his head, anybody who's dealt with uh, Kim, he had something to say. And remember, Meek Mills met with Kim on this whole prison reform thing. Remember that. Kanye, in his mind, he may feel like Meek is not the man for the job when it comes to that whole space that, that, that he's Put himself in or found himself in when it comes to prison reform um and kanye he's he, he, he's probably laughing because he didn't feel that meek was established enough to make a difference in his in his space in regards to him you know what i'm saying in regards to kanye so when they you know when they brought his name up in the conversation it's, it's just one of those things it's just like you know if you sit here and they say somebody that they think need to have a talk with you and you don't think that person is equally yoked to speak on your name, you know, it's kind of like, Tuh. you know, and I think that's what it is. It's simply that. Again, um, I don't want to make excuses for this man <laughs> and his behavior. <laughs> Real talk. Excuse. Like, oh, I don't. No. I don't want to make excuses <laughs> for this man. Excuse. You think I'm making excuses for him? I, 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 think, I, think, I think this man deserves... For all of us to give it to him as as real and as raw and as direct as possible. Like, like you don't think Meek Mill is qualified oh, to do boy. what he's doing. The bottom line is he's doing it. He's doing it. He 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 is taking his celebrity and he is allowing 
his influence mm -hmm. to work for the greater good. People who, in our community who are wrongly incarcerated, people who are caught up in the system, they, they get out and they're on parole and, and, and for the slightest infraction, they're back in there because the prison system is a business. How dare you laugh at this man? Like, like at the end of the day, Kanye, in my opinion, he needs to be silenced. Go get medication. We need to pray for him. But but we also need to call it what it is. This dude is a pariah. This dude is is very toxic Not a to everybody he comes into contact with. Was that with. on the and ASVAB or the real. SAT, that word? <laughs> I don't, I don't know think where I ever it was heard at. a rapper use that word. <laughs> Me and Pariah. Well, you using them. Go back like <laughs> he is. <laughs> but I love what, Re what Meek Mo what Meek Mills wrote back to him. He said, "Never lost my mind. Mm. I still got my family, my people's respect. Mm. Um, I'm freeing people from prison. I'm doing community service all month with the children, up close and personal. I'm chilling with my son and his friends today, and y'all left fifty on." clubhouse that's such a, a very, dope dope comeback a very mature reply yes very mature reply yes um that's it it's a very mature reply because someone that you sit back and you're like damn you just really said it all because sometimes believe it or not it takes a person you least expect to help get you back to your default mode you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you, ever, you, ever, you ever had to deal with a mediator or somebody? You like, who the hell? Man, he ain't. This person ain't qualified to talk to me. This person ain't qualified to talk me off this ledge. I'm finna jump. But that person surprisingly has the right words to bring you off of that ledge. Because everything that you want doesn't come in the package you expect. There you go. You, you get what I'm saying? Yes. So sometimes you can't be surprised. Cause I wouldn't be surprised. This thing. It, 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 with Kanye knowing Meek, knowing he's a younger, younger uh, entrepreneur, a, a younger, you know, philanthropist, rapper, whatever you want to call him, he he could have said something to Kanye to bring him back, just, even if it's just for a second. Like, damn, man, you're you right. You, you know what? You're absolutely right. But who knows? <laughs> yeah, who knows? Um, all right. Switch topics for a second. Kyrie Irving, another person who got caught in a hell of a scandal, I guess you call it. Me and you talked about it the last time we sat down. Um, since then, Nike pulled the endorsement from him. I think the deal was worth something like $11 million. Kyrie went out on the court the very next night and... Um, he covered up his sneakers, his with own Nike shoe. sneakers with the tape shoe saying, I'm free. Thank you, God. What's your thoughts? Um, man, my thoughts on that is I just so, somewhere in there, I feel like maybe this whole situation needs to be reevaluated. You know, from all aspects, it needs to be reevaluated. Um, some of the things that have happened on his behalf may have been harsh, um, may have been uncalled for. Um, as we see, Amazon still hadn't taken the book down. Nothing's happened to them. So it's gonna take a whole lot of money to go up against this person. You know what I'm saying, and, and what rights do you, what grounds do you have to stand on? You know what I'm saying. To make someone take this book down, I don't, I don't know. But I tell you, boy, they are. They don't play. They don't play about this. They are swift, and and they swing that hammer strong. Strong, like they Whoa. don't play. Now, 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 I'm, I'm gonna say this, and I mean it wholeheartedly. I mean, I like some of the outcomes for them being this strong. But I love the presence uh, that they give off. And you know, don't play with us. Can you imagine if we had that type of united front 
with with the amount of money that we spend every year? Absolutely. Can you Absolutely. can you just imagine that? Just just take your take 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 your take 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 yourself out of where we where we know we at and just give us that same type of unity, that same type of voice, that same type of weight. And we knew how to coexist without us taking out our own. Man, we'd be so, so, so much further ahead, man. I just, I, I, I wish I could just hit a little button and reprogram, but do, 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 dial up resilience, do, 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 dialed up. Don't say shit about me. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Dialed up, play with this if you want to. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I really wish that we had that, that sense of uh, unity and camaraderie. Because it, it is, it's almost like, whoa, damn. No. They, they, they you know, and, and, you know, just for the record, I don't know what went on in the boardroom. I don't know what went on in those meetings when Nike was, uh, trying to determine how they were going to move forward with Kyrie. But from the outside, from the outside, it, it feels like they got this one wrong. Um, you know, he reposted something. He apologized for it. He, he, he didn't stand on the fact that, you know, this is how I feel. Everything that, that I know of Kyrie has always shown him to be inclusive. So, Making an example of someone like him, I, I don't know that they got it. I, I think it's wrong, but it sends the bigger message out there that we are not to be played with. That That's essentially what it comes down to. Right. Don't even don't even give us a whiff. Of the fact that that you are against us in any way, in it's your like, thoughts, it's, it's like it's it's the. It's the tenacity of a of a kid talking to an adult out of line. It's like, right. what? Don't you ever if, if you don't sit your ass, you know what? Sit your ass in that corner. Don't, don't say nothing. Matter of fact, hold three books, put your right foot up, and face the corner. Stand up for four <laughs> days. Is that you know what I'm saying? It's like, don't play with us. I wish, I wish we had that level of understanding and that united front. Again, I I, I can't say it enough, bro. I, w I wish we had that. I couldn't agree yeah, with you I mean. more, brother. <laughs> I could not agree with you more. You know, last time you and I sat down, we spoke about um, takeoff. You know, it was fresh. You know, a month or so went by, nothing happened. And finally, in one of the rare occasions in hip hop, the person who allegedly killed an artist actually has been arrested. DJ Pat down in Houston has been arrested on allegedly being the one to fire the fatal bullets at takeoff. Um, they say when they found him, he was booked on a flight to go to Mexico and he had a bunch of cash since he's been locked up. He's got an enormous bill, $2 million. He's been asking the judge to reduce it. They're like, nah, you're a flight risk. How, what, what is your thoughts on this? Because this is not, you know, people down in Houston know this guy, right? DJ Pat. It ain't like he's an unknown. Okay, let me say this, all right? I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this as simple as play. Whether you're unknown or not, whether you're, you're beloved, whether you are respected, you know, all that's cool, right? But the people he was with, if, okay, right now, you're a good guy, right? If the people that you with get into it and the guns come out, And you got a gun. Just because you're a good guy, do you allow your people to possibly be shot? Correct. And I'm not saying that Quavo with them people shot at them or nothing like that. I'm just saying both sides had guns. You know, they, they, 
one of the, the dude who was with me goes, what's his name? Um, I can't think of his name. He had the gun standing up with the gun out, you remember? In the video. Mm -hmm. yep. What, I, what yep. I thought I saw. Because I wasn't there again. I, I, I wasn't here for none of this. But also, if right now, if I'm like my little homie get caught up in something, and I see somebody pull out the strap and go to busting, and I go to busting back, it's unbelievable that he got himself into this situation, but it's not unbelievable that he might have been trying to save his own life in the situation. He may not, he yeah. may not even been aiming at takeoff. You get what I'm saying? He could have yeah, been aiming yeah. at the other one with the gun, but it's just as bad because that's somebody in their camp. You, you see what I'm saying? So I don't, I don't know how to feel about it. A lot of people are like, nah, he's a good guy, can't. That's just like if I had to, if I was in a situation of altercation, I had to do what I thought was right to protect myself. Even if you thought it was wrong at that moment when it's life or death and I thought I had to do what I had to do to protect myself, people are like, man, Chuck, man, no, man, Chuck ain't that kind of guy. He a nice dude. But Chuck, keep that fire. So if it happened, nice dude or not, great, well-respected, nice guy, business owner or not, if I'm feeling like, well, it's life or death, and I'm, I'm, I feel like I could be the person to stop the potential threat, what's considered a threat to me and mine at that moment. I mean, it just happens. I mean, I, 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 I don't know. I don't, you know, I'm, I, I wasn't there. A lot of this stuff we talk about, neither one of us were there. Yeah, yeah. We're going off the facts that are presented, presented. We going off of whatever footage we could look at and be like, oh, 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 you know, you know, you hear people take it and break it down and get their uh, unsolicited perspective on it, you know, and it's just what it is. So I don't know. We're gonna have to see how this plays out, man. You know, because now he's asked for a special uh, investigator, um, and I believe they right. granted that for him. I mean, you know. We got to see how this plays out, man. I'm still saddened by the overall situation. You know, another another black man who, you know, <laughs> who succumbed to violence, gun violence. You know, like, I just wish we, I, I really wish that, like, I could, like, go back in time and, like, write with somebody finna say something crazy, I just put my hand over their mouth, or when they go to raise the gun, I could just, like, Slap the gun out of their hand invisibly. You know, I wish I could just go back in time and just go and erase some of this gun violence. If I, if I could do that, man, if, if God granted me the ability to do that, man, I would be so happy. I would be the real Superman. I would be, man, I would go back in time so far. So many people would still be here, but then someone would say I could be changing the course of what's already etched in stone. You want to know what's crazy, Jack, is because I'm willing to say 95, 100% of the people locked up right now mm -hmm. who did pull that trigger, they having that same thought that you just said, if I could go back in time. And not. If, 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 I, if, if I could just have allowed myself 10 seconds Five seconds to think about what I was just about to do before I did it. The course of history for me, my family, for my victim, their family, all his loved ones on both sides, it would have been changed. Changed. Yeah, so whoever's listening to this, especially if you carry that thing, please take five seconds before you even think about reaching for it. It's just so hard. A lot of man. lives change. It's, it's hard. Yeah. It's hard for these cats because... I'm telling you, man, if, the, if, 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 if society tells us that the man who next to you looks like you is dangerous, he telling you he dangerous. It's in the song, he dangerous. You look at the video, he's supposed to be dangerous. You see him in the movie, he dangerous. You see him on Instagram, he look dangerous. People are not giving themselves time to think. All they know is kill or be killed. And that's our harsh reality right now. It's kill to be killed because it's like, it's like even when you listen to certain music, when they come on, they make you feel like you got to be on your goon. You got to be with the look around the room, scan the room. It's, it's, it's on site or whatever. 
because that's the frequency of, 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 of what we deem as credible or deem as good music. You know what I'm saying? We just got to figure it out, man. We got to figure it out. Well, before we switch topics, um, it appears that Takeoff didn't have a will. And it's looking like his mother and father are going at it, you know, over his assets that were left behind. I, you know, I pray th that they could do this in a very peaceful and amicable way. Mm. Okay. Not sure if you got any thoughts on that, but if not, we we go I, to another I, time. I, I hope I hope it play out because I'm pretty sure yeah. that man got a lot of money coming in, a lot of assets and all that. Um, they gonna tell you something about it in a minute. We'll hear about it. Let me see what's the thing. We'll be hearing about it within the next month, because somewhere now somebody's gonna have to go forward with an attorney, and because it's such a high profile case, people are speaking about that at this at this st stage of that what you just spoke on. When it gets to the next phase, somebody's gonna speak about it. They're gonna speak on it. Truth. Okay, um, let's stay in Atlanta for a second. Mm -hmm. T.I. Yeah, yeah. Your friend, your boy. Yeah. Um, T.I., you know, it's crazy how in the world we live in, you know, nothing's ever really dead. As long if you put it out there on social media or if it's on the internet, it's always a chance that this thing one day will come back and haunt you. Um, as we know, T.I. has his expeditiously, I hope I said that correct, podcast. And um, a clip from an episode he did in 2020 came back. And essentially, he's saying that he caught a case before he blew up, before the world came to know him. And it was a gun case. Him and his cousin was in the car and... Uh, you know, during the trial, his cousin passes away. Lawyer essentially says, yo, look, if you say that was your cousin's gun, you walk. I can make all this go away. And this is something that came out of Tip's mouth himself. Now yeah, people right. are going at him. You snitched. Man, listen. Is that snitching? Nah. That's doing what anybody in their right mind would do. That's, there you go. That's that's all that there is. There you go. Unless you're willing to trade your freedom for the integrity of a deceased loved one. Cud did it. Yeah, cuz I love you, Cud, you know. But you ain't gotta be here locked up. You free. You in the bosom of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Like, ah. It's kind of one of them things. I, I mean, to hear him say it, when I, when I heard him say it, I was like, well, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, that's kind of, it's kind of what they said, what happened in Dirt Case. You know what I'm saying? Not to, put, not to bring nobody in here. It's all love, it's all respect, but I'm speaking on a platform, and, and that this is a general consensus of what the people have said in blogs. I'm, I didn't create that theory or narrative, um, but that's what it appeared to be, how people kind of came back and said that, you know, things were put on run. So, hey. Because that may be the reason okay. Tip spoke out about it. He might like, damn, you know, shit, I went through the same thing. Well, I guess it ain't that bad, I mean, you know. That don't make him a snitch. That make him a problem solver. He solved his problem. <laughs> See, he figured out how to get out of jail. Uh, okay, so let me let me let me throw this at you. Come on, Vlad. Uh -huh. Vlad interviewed um, Birdman's half brother, Terrence Gangster Williams. Right, gangster. Now, this is a guy who was locked up. And I think he was doing something like life plus 30. So he was never coming home. And when Vlad sat down with him, essentially he said, look, I got out because I told on a lot of my friends who ain't here no more. Like, like I was able to help so solve crimes on people who are now dead and gone. So I didn't really snitch on nobody. 
is nobody walking planet Earth who could say I snitched. So in my mind, I was like, okay, I'm in my early 20s. I could take this 20 and, you know, come home in my late 30s, early 40s. Then this other guy started telling me about how you could get a 5K1 and get your time reduced. So I was like, okay, I know Detective Bailey. I could reach out to the state, go over there, and they write a letter to the feds, and the feds have reduced my 20 years. So I got my two of my co-defendants. It was like, okay, cool. I go over there. Man, the detective asked me the question you had, like, when I first got in the game, right? This man got cold cases. This man got, like, 100 bodies. He want me to confess to and help out to close the case because, you know, when they close those homicides, it helps them, too. It makes them look good because they close the case. But in my mind, I'm like, man, no, I'm not doing that because... I don't, some of these people that have been killed, they got family that's killers. They got people, you know, that I know there'd be a retaliation behind this stuff. And, and I didn't do that. Now, I understand you want to further your career. And I was trying to help myself, too. But I was like, nah, man, let's pick. We pick certain ones, wrote a letter to the Fed. Um, then my co-defendant was to brag about homicides. And the Fed was like, listen, man, you, went, you, you gave up this bull crap. Oh, and I also gave him some murders. Uh, with Sterling and Dooney, so some of the, some of my people that I'm at odds with now, uh, even BG was upset about it too. And everybody came after him, including Boosie, who is extremely outspoken. Yeah, you know, and, and Boosie essentially, yo, I don't want nothing to do. As far as you talk to the police, you a snitch. Is it not the same thing? All right, let's, let's look at it like this. If I die and I have $5 million to my name and you're my closest family of kin, is it wrong for you to become the beneficiary of my assets? No, it's not wrong. So, hey, my man's dead and gone. I need that blessing so I could be out here headed home. It's the same mm. concept, you know what I'm saying? They ain't here no more. I need that blessing. It gets passed down to me. I am granted immunity through their death because I'm gonna put this on them. We walk. I'm a beneficiary of the get out of jail free <laughs> card. The past. I mean, that's just what it is. I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised because a lot of times, let's be for real, when you have certain cases that are unsolved and go on so long and become cold cases, um, it, it looks bad against the people who are investigating the authorities, right? It looks bad. It's like, damn, nobody I still ain't found out who killed such and such, you know? Y'all still ain't found out who killed them three babies up there. You know, it's bad. So when they come across and they could say, hey, we can get this down by saying we solved this case. Let's go with it. They ain't got to work on it again. Nobody got to come along. Hey, I'm a cold case file expert. I'm about to open up this case from 15 years ago, from 20 years ago, from 50 years ago. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes, hey, they'd rather go ahead and say, hey, case closed. Case closed is a win. That's a, that's a W for them, you know? So, hey, okay, well, you say that's what happened. Well, he ain't here to defend himself. Well, he did have a hell of a record where he did do this. He was connected to this in 87. So, yeah, okay, all right, we'll take that. Boom, let y'all. If that's going to work, I, I, I would, wouldn't be surprised you start seeing more people do it. You're mm -hmm, seeing it happen. Mm -hmm. It's happening. Because now you're able to call out people who, 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 who's done it. You see what I'm saying? That means they, yeah. ma they made it public knowledge. If Gangster didn't tell nobody, would you have known? If Tip didn't say nothing to anybody, would you have known? So that means that things do happen. And sometimes people want to want to create the narrative of, hey, man, I know we've been growing up saying all this time, but this really, it ain't that if you look at it from this angle. It ain't snitching if it's like this. This is just me being savvy enough to figure out how to get my ass out. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's interesting because Boosie and Tip, they actually got a collab album coming out. So I wonder how 
this is going to play out because Boosie was so outspoken against Gangsta. So, you know, I wonder is he going to, so far he hasn't addressed it, but I wonder is how he's going to address this moving forward. I mean, at, at the end of the day, it's one of them things where, you know, I think they men, they men are men. They're going to stand on what they believe in. Um, and then we don't know, you know, we, we kind of do, excuse me, through those two having their beef. It's, it's not a just overnight beef. Um, well, misunderstanding with, with Boosie and Gangster, you know what I'm saying? Because I've watched mm -hmm. some interviews about that and, and whatnot um, to the point of Boosie saying, I'm not going to speak on speak his name no more. You know what I'm saying? Out of respect, I'm going to let it be. So I just feel like at the end of the day, you know, it could be another level of uh, trauma that come with Gangster name when it comes to, in regards to Boosie. We don't know what kind of interactions that have crossed the lines, crossed paths, and created issues for the two. We don't know. It's a lot of stuff, you know, we just not privy to. So, I mean, I can see Boosie saying, that's one thing, this another, and then that's it. Mm -hmm. It's not even a question. It's like, nah, man, I ain't worried about that. Tip, Tip did what he had to do, but this sit over here, you know, we don't know. Some, one of the people who were deceased, who could have been told on, might have been somebody who died with a certain level of integrity and a certain level of love on their name. You kind of get what I'm saying? And yeah, then it's yeah, like, yeah. how dare you throw dirt on this deceased person's name when this person never was that type of person, wouldn't have ever done anything like that. You, it's like you defame their whole legacy. You tarnish the legacy. And some people feel like they're going to stand on that. And I think that's what made Boosie stand on that. He felt like, you know, Gangster was possibly tarnishing the integrity of those deceased uh, individuals' legacy. No, I agree. A hundred percent, I agree. You know, and, and we talking about a gun charge here. Like, we're not talking about bodies all over town. We're talking about a gun charge. So, anyway, stay in the A for a second. Um, Young Thug and Gunner, just picking your brain. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how do you think their rap career turned out if either one of them cooperates? Because right now they got about 28 of them still behind bars. No, like absolutely no bail given to anybody. And from what we understand or from what's being said, people have started talking. So if either one of them two start talking, do you think they got a rap career? Man, it's just, it's just crazy. Because we, we, you're asking that question because we really don't know. We really don't know. I mean... I'm going to say this. You ready? Yep. There are rappers who have named themselves behind mafia gangsters, right? And wholeheartedly, these names get changed up. You change the last name, say it on your front, say the name, you know. And some of those same guys that they're, um, you know, using their legacy and the name, you know what I'm saying, attaching their their persona with this legacy, you know, some of these guys were snitches. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. You, 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 you know what I'm trying to say? So, you know, I don't, I, you know, I don't know what, and this is a different generation. This is, this is a different generation because you could do some things in this generation and people will forgive you for it that you couldn't do in other generations before this. You know what I'm saying? That's just the truth, you know, it's, it's, the, I mean, let's just keep it real. Different. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, let's just keep it 100. I, I don't know if he has a, a career in this community, but it certainly appears like Takashi 69 is still making money out there, still able to go overseas, do shows, still bringing in a lot of money. So th this is a very different generation. One thing about it, every everybody doesn't, stand on our culture the same. You know what I'm saying? It's just not the same. It's like, oh, well, we don't really care if he snitched or not. We love his music. We love him. Like, oh, okay. You know, different countries, they might not even be, they could care less about that. Oh, they could look at the story differently than we see it. We, They see it as well. 
he was hanging with these people for protection maybe, and these people turned around and started, you know, uh, doing things against him, threatening his life. You know, this is how they was getting money out of him. You know, they, they, they started trying to kill him. The guy, for heaven's sake, started having sex with his baby mother, you know? Can you blame this poor guy? Now, when you sit back and see it from that, you'd be like, dang, that is kind of... I've been rocking with y'all, boy. I make sure y'all eat. I'm getting like, I'm paying everybody. I'll make sure everybody's straight. I'm a breadwinner. And y'all, you, 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 you smashing my baby mama behind my back. You threatening my mama? Oh, y'all trying. I mean, in his mind, he had no choice but to snitch. If not, he gonna have to try to kill somebody. And if that ain't in his heart and he's not of that, then he did what he thought was best. And that was mm -hmm. snitch. Not saying I condone it. I'm just saying people see it differently. We gonna see it as, nah, bro. You was out here in it. You were running with them boy. You were popping like you this and that, that and that. No matter what they did to you, you in the snitch. So people still gonna look at it like, no, nah, I don't care if your life was about to be taken at midnight. You made it, you didn't, you didn't die. No, nah, you don't go snitch. Cause our culture gonna say, get it back in what? Blood. So, yeah. That's my take on that. Um, did you see a third person was arrested in this young Dolph murder? I did. I, I, the police are doing a whole lot better when it comes to solving crimes in, in, involving rappers. Of course. You see, you see, because it, there's so doing... many people that can help them piece, piece it together and solve it. Big brother, man, man, it, it, man listen. Police could so solve so many crimes and things now, murders now because of a ring cam. Oh, that was a oh, that house got a ring outside, ring on the door, it catch you. Man got a Tesla. His, his, his car got a camera on it. You walk up close on it, it film who you are. The surveillance is just that powerful now. And people want to be a part of uh justice even more now. Mm-hmm. Because they feel like it's, it's in certain instances. It's justified that I help get you off the street. Some people, and some people just like, nah, I don't want no parts of that because I don't want anybody to come back and, you know, do whatever to me and mine. So some people is not going to snitch, and some people will. And everybody don't live by that street code. Everybody ain't playing in the streets. You know, you know some people look at it like, look, uh, let's say in Dolph case, right? Dolph... It has been nothing but good things that came out about this man's, you know, he was doing so much for the community. Just people, when they lose good people, they want justice. They want to see those who took this person away. Look, I, I don't have to play by them street rules. Huh. I'm not from the streets, but I know something. And if I can help get this person put behind bars, I will. And it just is what it is, man. At the end of the day, people want you to, not say nothing. If you saw it, they don't. They don't want you to have no. You, you you're not supposed to speak up on it, speak about it, or nothing. But if somebody in their mind just watched you committing as a murder, they don't care what your reason is for killing this person. You just killed the person, and you possibly could have killed other innocent people. People want you off the street in in scenarios like this, man. You got a lot of people. The man was, he was loved. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He was yeah, adored. He, he really know? was. So this is what it is. And I mean, you got people who was already, you already had student cats was caught. They was caught. They could have yeah. been snitched. They could have, they really could have snitched as soon as they got caught. And the police, nobody let that out. Nobody told us they snitched because they want to catch the people they need to catch. Mm. You kind of get what I'm saying? We don't know that. Yeah. That's mm. just like when you think of uh, Takeoff's murder. The police. Oh, so what? Here it is two months later. Oh, you think the police just found the bottle, the wine bottle? They just saw the footage of the bottle of wine that had Pat's fingerprints on it, allegedly? Nah, they yeah. saw that the same night. 
But they, they probably might have to just kind of get all the, the eggs, you know, to put in that basket and figure it out. Because sometimes you, it's just like a, uh, uh, it's like a secret indictment. By the time them people pick you up, you are already, you are already guilty. They don't even got to prove it. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure if you saw it, but um, one of Young Dolph's affiliates, Grove Hero, and um, CMG artist Lil Migo got into it at an airport. Did you see that online? I did. I, first and foremost, you at an airport. That's, <laughs> that's federal territory. I'm not sure what they thought they was going to do there, but I guess, I guess it was good for the gram. I don't know. I'm just trying to figure out which hand did Grove hit him with. Because this hand look like this, <laughs> you know. Because it was like, how he slapped that phone out the boy's hand, like, phew. Well, he did get kind of closer, but he could have got closer. Ah, hit him with the, maybe he grabbed him with the good hand. <laughs> ah, no, nah, but he had the phone. He had, so I don't know. I'm trying to figure out how he was holding his phone up when he, when he tried to slap the man and hit the phone out of his hand. Let's stay at the airport for a second. Yeah. Lil Meech, star of hit TV series BMF. Yep. Caught at the airport, going through TSA with a gun in his luggage. Yep. Hey, okay, first and foremost, how, how does this even happen? Move. Everybody know you, you going through, like how does that happen in your Moving opinion? too fast? That happened to me. That same thing happened to me, man. Are you serious? Yeah, man. Went to the Outcast Christmas party at their studio. I had a uh, rest in peace to my girl, Juice, BMF Juice. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Me and Juice was cool. Juice bought me, I, I'll never forget, I, I landed in California one time, and I ended up in my hotel room. I walked in the hotel room, I was like, damn. It was my birthday. I had all kind of Gucci luggage and gifts and flowers and stuff. It was like from your homie, Juice, BMF. I'm like, I'm scared to stay in here. How she know where I was at? You know what I'm saying? Who, who, <laughs> who, got, who granted you access to put all these nice ass bags in my room? Huh. So I was carrying my laptop in this particular bag. And I was in my Ferrari that night. And the Ferrari didn't have a, my Ferrari didn't have a glove compartment. It just had a little piece in between the seat. That's like a little a, a, a compartment or whatnot. So I had my gun, my 5'7", so I was like, uh, uh I put it in my bag. I never put it, I never ever put a gun in that bag ever before. So I ended up going to the party um, and, and, and I drove, drove out of town with my artist, got word from a label that they wanted to sit down. I, had, I, I brought the laptop so that we can go through his pictures. That he just did a photo shoot. So I'm gonna fly back, had to sit down with the label. I never went in my bag and got that gun out of it. I forgot that the gun was in my bag. That's the, the only reason I brought that bag because the laptop was in it because I wanted to let him look through the pictures. And when I got to the airport and I seen them people step back, I'm like, why the hell is it? It was a lady in front of me, I swear to God. I thought she had a bomb on her. I was like, oh man, can I step back to her? They said, no, sir, you hold. And then she said, no, no, no. They let her go. I was like, damn. I was looking back, everybody in the airport looking at me like, I was like, oh, <laughs> shit. I was thinking, like, what the? My damn God. I, sir, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come here. Is there anything in this bag? And I heard the man say, well, it looks like it's toothpaste. He's like, no, that ain't toothpaste what we see on the x-ray. I was like, oh, hell. He said, is there anything in this bag that hurt me? I was like, no. Man, listen. When them feds, because the feds came up as soon as they heard a gun. Man, when he went in my bag and pulled that gun out, I was like, oh my God, I forgot. That was, I was just like, oh yeah, this one cost me. It cost me a lot of money. That one cost me a lot of money, man. That one cost me a lot mm. of money right there. Ooh, bad mistake. But it happens. It happens. I okay. Gonna, I don't know how I was going to play out for a little meets, but whew, those are real charges. Yeah, those is real charges. Did he end up getting federal again. charges? Did they charge him federally or he just got state? I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but I'm assuming if it's at the airport, it well, gotta be fun. Well, I mean, they, they, they got the right to say because them feds took me downstairs. You know, the feds, they, you know, they 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 ID look different than the police. You know, the police show <laughs> they bad. Fed bad, wide. I'm a big, 
more like a little <laughs> a sun visor in their pocket with a, the badge on it. They hit me and I was like, federal agent such, 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 such. I was like, yeah, I'm going to jail. This is going to cost me a lot. <laughs> they asked me to tell the story. They were stopping me in the middle of the story. Go back to the front. Go to the end. They're trying to, you know, cross-examine me, them too. They said, man, it, we believe you're telling the truth, man. We, you don't have a, a record or history of anything. Da, da, da. And with what it sounds like, then they, once they looked on social media, they saw the outcast party or what, you know, so it all made sense, you know, as to how I ended up there. So it was like, how'd you get here? I drove. So once they asked me everything, they was like, okay, your story check out. We're not going to charge you. He said, maybe they won't charge you either. Maybe they won't charge you on state charges. They'll let you go. Shh. Them folk hit my ass with them charges. I went to jail. Mm. Mm. Cost me $30,000. I paid the attorney. My partner, I ain't going to even say his name, man. I ain't going to even say his name. I should say his name. I'm like, damn, John White. But so uh, 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 a good reputable attorney that I know said, yeah, my attorney, Nova, called this attorney so that she could see if he knew anyone in there. He's like, yeah, I got a friend of mine. He's, he's good. He can get Jock out. Call him up. Yes, I'm such and such. I'm like, okay, but 30 grand. I'm like, damn, 30? Right here at Christmas? Paid the man the money. Got me out. I done went home. Hey, he told me I ain't got to come back. <laughs> Whoa, them fuck, man, I seen that junk on the news, man. Just the man, the day after Christmas, I'm in the bed, sleep. Boom, my mama running down. Hey! I said, what? She said, you on the news. I said, for what, still? She said, they got a warrant for your arrest. You a flight risk. They think you're going to jump ship. I said, why? As soon as I said, why, I turned the TV on. They showing me on the TV talking about a skip court. I'm like, well, he told me I ain't have to come. The judge asked this man, why didn't your client come? Well, you're honest, the holidays, my client had previous engagements. That judge say, look, man, I'm giving that man 10 hours to be in front of this court, be in front of me in court, or we locking him up. Well, I had to jump my ass on the flight, go up there in front of that judge, sit there in front of him, Come to find out the attorney I had, he wasn't even no defense attorney. My partner done put me with a damn real estate attorney. Damn. Are you serious? Yeah, man. The man had to be this bar. He had to be this bar because I could have I was about to go to jail because he told me I didn't have to come back up there. I'm like, what do you mean? So I had to get a whole nother attorney on the case. And then, you know, I had to get my other attorney to go after him. Cause I wasn't trying to get him this bar. I was just trying to get my money back. So they, he had to give me the money back, but they just barred him in the process. Okay. Um, <laughs> Sorry for going with the long story. Nah, it's good. It, you know, cause it brings perspective to, you know, you hear these stories, Lil Meech, it's like, it's, how, how, how do you even get caught? Like, you know you was going to go through that thing. So I think for you, you even telling us that story, it give people an understanding how it could happen. You sometimes doing you just too moving much. quick. Man, you are, yeah. man, this man doing shows. He popping. He getting a bag. Plans. Things are sporadic. I, I put the strap in the bag. I get it later. Moving around, go back, sitting here at, at, at the hotel. He gone for a day, possibly. Ain't no telling what's going on. Forget that it's in the bag. He ain't even looking for the strap because he normally don't even have the strap on him, maybe. It, it, in this type of situation, he got security. You don't know what the scenario is. You know what I'm saying? It just happened, and then by the time that bug go off, it's like, damn, I forgot. I wasn't even thinking because he thinking of, he got to get over here. He can't miss his flight. I got a bag to get. If I don't make this fly, I got to pay these folk this back. I don't pick up the back end, and they're going to sue me for the front end. So uh, you just don't know, man. You don't even know. But, of yeah, course, we automatically go to the negative side of the thing. Man, y'all just y'all just don't care. You're doing too much. Y'all just, what y'all thinking about? I wasn't thinking. I made a mistake. I wasn't trying to be gangster at the moment. It just happened, auntie. You know what I mean? You said, what was you thinking about? Actually, I wasn't thinking. I wasn't thinking. <laughs> I, it just happened. All right. Um, <laughs> I'm sure you heard R. Kelly dropped a new album this week. Allegedly. I admit it. I admit it. <laughs> and it was quickly, with a quickness, 
before people even knew the album was out, it was taken down from the streaming platforms. Mm. Then R. Kelly did a call from behind the wall and it was like, yo, I, I'm fighting my appeal, man. I, just, I, I ain't put no album out. I do have one question, though. Why is it that all of his music has to be banned? Or, or, or is it all banned? So, I mean, why, why, why is that? Why, did, why is that? Because he was. Well, that was one of my next questions to you. Because of course, yeah, I heard that, and, and R. Kelly, you know, was able to call from 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 prison or wherever he is, and they basically he he said, "Nah, man, I didn't do that. Why would I do that when I'm going up for an appeal? Why would I say I admit it?" And he said, "That's someone he believe is trying to um, sabotage his appeal case." But I. That is a good question. Why, why is that? Because there's so many other people who have done things that have done things bad, been convicted for it, and their TV shows are still running or their music is still being streamed and played and sold. Why is it that we get the... It's like we get the harshest punishment, man. And I'm not saying that in, 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 in some cases it's not deserved, you know, you earn that. I ain't saying that's not the case, but I'm just saying we we do get the harsher punishment. We get the harsher punishment. Because I ain't going to lie, R. Kelly made some great music. He made t some timeless music. And simply because of what he's been accused of and convicted of, I'm supposed to just not listen to this person that I grew up through my childhood to my adolescent to my adulthood. I'm not supposed to listen to this person anymore. Oh, uh oh, he did something, so I'm supposed to just clearly wipe him out of my mind. Harvey Weinstein had it for all the productions and movies he's done, with what he's done. Had they stopped into the streaming of those movies? Had they banned those movies? Nah, no. Okay. What's your boy that they were saying was giving the women HIV? Charlie Sheen? Who? Oh, Charlie Sheen. Yep, yep, yep. His TV show's still on. Yeah. Two and a half men. Um, so, I was just curious about that. I was just curious about that. It's like, why no? Why has no one pushed for these other, th these things to happen to uh, other offenders in the world? That's, that's, that's what I want to say, because it's just crazy to me. I was at a party the other night. I was at a good party. It was vibed out. Man, that step in the name of love. Step in the name of love. And I'm talking about everybody like, when the step in it, I was like, <laughs> I was like, can we step to this? I'm like, damn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, and people were looking around like, yo, come on. I'm like, all right. We're going to step into the name of love, wondering, is this wrong? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I can't make this I can't make this up man this is crazy man oh man now nah, that's an interesting point because like you said um, all the movies put out through the Weinstein company they're still streaming they're still out there if you want to buy them too much money attached you know and this yeah it's, and this man is he he's a convicted uh, rapist Okay, um, or he's a convicted sexual offender, abuser, offender. How about that? You're right. Okay, Deion Sanders. Man. Coach Prime. Mm -hmm. He left Jackson State, yep. um, which is a HBCU. Yep. He brought a lot of light and a, and a lot of wins yep. um, to that campus and undefeated to the whole season, HBCU. Right? It was undefeated Absolutely, season, undefeated. Right? Yeah. Undefeated season. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but he broke out and, um, you know, he's now head coach at Colorado University. People calling him a sellout. Yeah. What's your thoughts on that? Man, you know, it's one thing when you work hard for a, a system, a program, a university, um, you're doing something that hasn't been done. You're bringing light to something that should have been exposed uh, a long time ago. You're ruffling feathers in that arena because you're getting top recruits to come play at your school. And they're not going to these bigger D1 schools that have been known to uh, just have their way with that pool of talent when it comes to athletes. Um, but, you know, I speculated as soon as it happened. 
I didn't call him until I was like, man, it's something with that money. Some money, like some money ain't right or something. And when it came out that um, some of the funds for the school were misappropriated, were misappropriated funds, um, stuff for the football program, or whatnot. It was just money that was there for that. That it just magically disappeared. And I think the amount of money he gonna make was five million a year, five point two, five point two a year. M's. Now that ain't that ain't prime time. Deion Sanders prime time type of money when he was the man, of course not. But in this day and age, if you could do something that you love and be uh, paid out five million a year for it, I mean, some people say, "Oh, he was okay, going to make but more than that." Here's a real he question: make, He was going to make more than that if he just stayed at the HBCU. He said he put the right people in that in that in that program. Here's a question for you, you know, and I don't know that he was going to make that kind of money at a HBCU just to keep it a hundred, Jock, um, from what's being said out there. Right. And I don't know how true it is. He's saying that he gave up part of his salary to bring in staff at the HBCU because they just couldn't afford it. Yeah. But I ask you, you know, initially, is he in his right? People calling him a sellout. Um, for leaving because he got a lot of A level talent, you know, who had scholarships, who had offers, who had full rides at really, really established institutions to forego those scholarships, forego those full rides, and come on down to Jackson State. And then he break out. Well, all he was showing them is to follow your heart. They follow their heart to make a better decision. He followed his heart to make a better decision. Ooh. Mm. We don't want to have that conversation. Because we're not ready for that conversation. You know what I'm saying? People are like, nah, you talking all this about the HBCU, da 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 He like, look, man, I done took cuts and did all this for this place. Hell, the other, the other school, Colorado, said they didn't really have the money to give them. They said, well, how y'all going to pay them? The man said, well, we're going to come up with the money. <laughs> what? My boy was out on a a promissory note. He was out on a, a promise. I promise you, we're gonna come up with the money. Don't worry, we got you. <laughs> All right, okay. I like it. I like it. I like it. Prime time taking this talent to Colorado. I see it. I see. I'll get caught up in all that, you know, because the very people who be like, "Oh, you're a sellout. You're a sellout." Put them in that same predicament. They ain't gonna even stand on it. They ain't gonna be able to. They ain't strong enough. You know what I'm saying? It's like you over here making three. What was the salary? Three hundred thousand. So I'm trying yeah, to figure out was it three hundred thousand after the after the pay cut? Like he's getting six hundred thousand, and he gave up half of it, three hundred to the school, or was he making three hundred thousand, gave up half? And he was only making one hundred fifty thousand. Nah, I think I think he took home three hundred. Okay, so after so maybe six hundred thousand, yeah. right? Six hundred thousand for only the year. Thing I know, Five only thing I point know two dude. milli for the year. What, what you gonna do? What's Sean, what, what is Sean Press? Sean Press. Uh, I mean, could you speak think, to the I people right they're... now? Sean Press, could you speak to the people right now? Or are you gonna make this move? Are you gonna let go of the three hundred k a year for the five point two million dollar a year salary? What's your plans? I think that the Wu said it better than I ever could. Cash rules. All Everything right, around me. <laughs> this is, I'm leaving. I'm taking my talents to Colorado. Ladies and gentlemen, the boy's out. You know what I'm saying? You're out of there. Yeah, out of I mean, there. put it this way, man. Th this, is, this is why you work hard. This is why you work hard. You know, there's somebody else that can do that job. But you work hard so that you can be compensated properly and if somebody sees that he's worth five million god bless him in my opinion sure. okay talking about taking your talent somewhere else looks like good old nia long taking her talents back to la her and um Ime Udoka, Udoka, <laughs> you know they finally split and essentially she was hurt she put out a statement and said nobody 
took her or her son into consideration when the news broke. You know, nobody from the Celtics even reached out to her before. She learned about it in the media. See, and that's the, and that's and that was a slap in the face to her because in, in, in her statement, she she clearly stated that she looked at the Celtics organization as family. Her and her husband um, and their family were taken in as family. And that's why she spoke out. Like, it's like, damn, like, y'all didn't consider the unit you were about to break up. Because to be honest, had that been kept in house, and the and, and, and the disciplinary actions were taking place, if they took place quietly, her and that man could, would probably still be together. But that big slap in the face publicly, and she just hear about it pff, via internet. She had to cut ties. I'm gonna keep it a hundred. That's what made her say that make say, make that statement that she made. You could listen. You you could you could get the you could, you could hear what a person saying by what they don't say. Said nobody thought about me and my son, and my husband. Nobody cared. Nobody thought about that. Y'all didn't think this was gonna be humiliating. You didn't think this was gonna destroy my family. Nobody thought of that. Nobody cared. Nobody nobody could have reached out to me. Someone from the 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 the, the, the organization that works with the mental status of these players. Nobody could have sent somebody over there to talk to me about this shit, a, a team, attorney, anything. Y'all just gonna put my business out, ain't you? All right, I'm out of here. That's probably, but if it would have been quiet and we didn't know about it, we wouldn't have known. Probably, she, probably, she may have stayed, she may not have, who knows? But it's, it's way more difficult when you're humiliated by something like this. You know, it's way more difficult to forgive you. No, everybody gonna say I'm crazy. You know, so. Nah, yeah, absolutely right. I mean, she was put in a very, very difficult position <sighs> tough, and then man. trying to work through it in the public eye, not easy. Because no matter, here's the deal. And she was right? around that woman. She hadn't seen that woman before. That woman had been yeah. booking their family tribe. Didn't the lady help them move? Yes, yeah. Man, yeah. you, you, man, can just imagine. Just imagine. Well, in, in, in my opinion, like that setup. probably. That is what probably really did it for her. Even if she wanted to give him another try. It's forget like about what the, the world people, was saying. All yeah. the people you had to smash. You had you to got smash. Me this out little scraggly, with your side scraggler, piece. this little scrawny scraggler. And she right here in my face. Like, I done talked to this lady. And ain't no type of, ain't no telling what she done ever disclosed to this woman, talked to this woman about. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, you and you yeah. behind her back, this one behind her back, smashing her husband. It's a cold world, my boy. Yeah, it's a cold world. Um, turn the heat on. Shout the knee alone. On. <laughs> All right, um, not sure if you saw Cardi B. She is. Nah, you um, good. I was talking about this. <laughs> she got up for the turn the heat off. Cardi B is very outspoken. You know that. Um, mm -hmm. That that's what makes us all love her mm -hmm. is because she has no filter from day one. Um, and she revealed that she had ninety five percent of her booty shot injections removed, and she pretty much put it out there to ladies: don't do it, don't do it. And it's interesting because years ago, Vlad sat down with her. And he asked her, like, yo, where did you get this done? And do you even know what they shot in your butt? And she was like, yo, I, I got it done in a random hotel room when I used to dance. And I got no clue what was in those injections. People have literally died from these types of shots and because they're not FDA approved. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And it's not done by doctors. You know, like we, I remember once we put up a, an interview of a woman who lost her arms and legs from getting shots done. So, you know, you want to get money, you feel a certain type of way, but you got your health and the health is really all you got. So, so how is that decision kind of put together? Um, well, you know, when half of the strippers and the bartenders in New York City have illegal ass shots that is done practically by the same person, 
It's just like, yeah, I heard that some women died of it, but it's like, what are the odds? Like, what are the odds is going to be me? Like, what are the odds? I mean, I could have died with getting my boobs done, you know? It, it's just like, it was on some what are the odds type of thing. The only thing was that when I was getting my ass shots, I was awake and I almost passed out. Like, I was like... I feel like I feel like I'm about to faint. Like I was telling the lady, and she's like, "Well, you only have one ass cheek done." So she gave me some milk and some cookies, and then we just continued the procedure. And it's like, when I finished, this ass was fatter. I always had a little butt, but so <laughs> essentially, she's put sounding the alarm. Like, ladies, if you even think about this, especially to the young ladies. Don't do it. Man, it's a lot of women going through this this very thing right now. Um, K. Michelle went through it where she almost didn't make it. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of women that are going through this. And they go through it quietly. Some of them do because the, the embarrassment, the anguish, the just the whole process of it. Because what do you call it? Necrosis? When the when the when the skin the body start the skin start eating itself yeah necrosis from that stuff yep, yep. like and, and you talk about me using SAT words yeah but it, but, <laughs> but 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 your word what they about to say you said pariah and I said necrosis yeah them ain't everyday words you don't hear them regularly yeah the women who got them them ass shots here in the body though it's happening. Because more and more of them are having to uh, go get it removed. They have to. After a while, the body forms a mass around it. Then, then once it starts eating away at it and the skin starts deteriorating, they become inflamed and infected. And Man, that's a scary sight to see, man. I got a homegirl right now who, who went through that. And I saw her pictures through her recovery. And all I can say is my dog, Jay, she really did that, man. I really, really was like, wow, you almost was out of here, dog. You know what I'm saying? You almost out of Hold here. Hold on. You, you saw, did you see the pictures of her actual butt or you saw the pictures of her recovering? So, Jay is, is my own girl. Uh-huh. Beautiful woman, right? Uh-huh. She walk in the room. You stopping and looking at her, like... Period, point blank. She showed her recovery on her IG. She showed the whole process, having that removed. It was bad, Damn. man. It was bad. I got a whole, it's a bunch of women. I know a bunch of women who've gone through this, man. It's happening. But again, everybody doesn't have the, the strength to put their journey out there. Because you got so many people like, oh, this real, this mine. Girl, we can see that thing shape a little different on the, or right here. Well, you know, you know. Some people just don't want to admit that. They mm -hmm. just don't want to admit it, you know? And some people don't have a problem admitting it. Yeah, I had surgery. I had that. I, I got this ad done. It, it's messed me up, and I got to take it out. But I pray that cardio heals well, and um, it's better once it's over with. She probably got enough money. She got enough money. No, it's like, look, man, anything that ain't right, go on and come clean the body and clean it up. Or you gonna have to deal with it tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Like she might yeah. be having complications we don't know about with it. You know, Bacardi's very transparent, and when it's time for her to talk about it, because she already put it out that that happened. But well, I don't know. Did she put it out there? How, how, how did that come across? The no, card, I think she she, she was put the one it out there. Put it out right. there herself. Yeah, I was right. Uh -huh. So that's her taking her stance and saying, "Hey, y'all, don't get caught up in this. I did it." I thought it was gonna make the best, make me better, this and that, but man, forget about it. She got, she got, she got, she got, she got kids now. You know what I'm saying? Get, got kids now. Like you can't even play with it. And she's probably thinking, like, oh, let me just go on and get 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 rid of this. I see it being a problem. We don't know what the doctor told her. Like, hey, I think it's about time you remove it, you know? So pray for a speedy recovery. Yeah, I think it's um yeah, so, so do I, and I think it's courageous, um, and it's right in line with everything that that she's been from day one. She she's very very transparent about who she is, who she was, um, 
And I think this is going to help a lot of women. Like you said, it, there's women dealing with this right now as we speak. I'm not sure if you got a chance to catch up with this. Um, and I believe it was a breakfast club, Ashanti. Um, she went on the breakfast club, had an in-depth conversation about so much as what's, you know, the whole Irv thing. But in the conversation, something interesting came out. She told a story about a producer who gave her a couple of fire tracks. And when it was time to, you know, get them tracks cleared, the producer asked her to take a shower with him. And she thought he was joking. And she was like, uh, you know, like, serious. Like, <laughs> I need these tracks. I need, this, Look, <laughs> I need I'm, I'm the really beats. Like... <laughs> and come to find out, that producer was dead real. And when she was like, nah, I'm not going to take a shower with you, he that charged that, her for them beats. Who was the producer? But that that's where I'm going with this. It's, 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 it's giving, as the lady say, it's giving. She, is she talking about? Is she talking about She her? said, no, no, she, no, no. This is somebody totally different. Okay. This is somebody totally different. How you know? A, a, a straight producer. How do you know? Because the conversation was about Irv, and I'm sure if it was him, she would have just stuck with that. We're talking about Ashanti. She's been very elusive in this whole matter. Okay, to be more direct, she spoke about Irv um, and about all that they went through, and then she segued. So I think she would have kept it in the same vein. Nah, if it was nah, because that's how people. You don't think so? That's how people. You know how people would clear something up, then throw something out there. Be like, I told y'all, I just didn't tell y'all to what regards. It's like I got it off but, my but, chest. But they wind up, but they wind up having a, a, a intimate relationship anyway. So she couldn't have been talking about we, him. But we don't. Because she says she never slept with this guy. It ain't nerve. This is it, somebody else out there right now. Who is scared to Shaking. death? Shaking, like, please don't tell on me. They are scared please. to death, child. Please don't tell on me. It's somebody. I mean, whoever it is, I don't know. But ah, that's an ugly. Do person. you understand? Your first question was, "Who is it?" Like that was your first question. They are scared. Even when they see this, they're gonna be like, "My God, I hope Ashanti is having a good day today and don't hear." This interview and just throw my name out there. So for the amount I of money they was for the amount, all you gotta do is just go back and look at what time, what year she said it was. Go back and look at the album and see what album on it because they paid for them tracks. They released them tracks. You know what's crazy though? Um, I mean, here we go again with him. But academics, you know, he slammed Ashanti for not revealing who the producer's name was, so other females <laughs> would be protected. I mean, clearly academics just wants to know, but he framed it up right. No, I mean, good, good attempt. You can't for that. Everybody's not messy. This is a new day and age we live in. People want to people wanna be like, ah, I told you, ah, I exposed you. People want you to, you know, when, when people are disgruntled, when people are uh, no longer in your circle, that's what they do. They expose your hand or they'll put stuff out there on you because... They'll weaponize whatever they know. They'll weaponize secrets against you. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's just it's, it's, it's what it is. At the end of the day, I don't know who it is. It sounds like a sucker move to me. But it's, she got in the shower with him, though, didn't she? No, she, that's what I keep oh. telling you. No, oh. she paid for the tracks. I thought she, oh, she was like, no, I'm not sleeping with you. So if she paid for the track, then we know who it is. Let's go back. And, man, put, somebody pull up a shunt to Adam. Let's see. Will it figure this out? Did she say what year it was? <laughs> Shit. I don't know. We I didn't get to the, deeply into why it. Why academics didn't do that part? He solved everything else. Hey, act. <laughs> listen, act. All right. I know I had a whole rant about you the last time I was on here. It's okay. It's what we do. It happens. Go on and do the homework, act. Go solve it. That's what you like to do anyway. Tell us about it. Because that boy want to know. He... He want to know something. He going to go do his homework. Go, Yo, go at the him. core of it, what'd you say? No, I won't say go on and tell him what it is. Let's find out who it is. Because that's all somebody got to do. 
Just go back and look at the, the, the interview. What's the timeline of, of when she paid for them songs? Is there any of that in there? Is any of those details in there? All you got to do is go back and look at whatever song with Ashanti came out around that time. Then we're going to go look up the producer. Then they're going to see, we, they're going to look up pictures or videos of her and that producer. If she in a picture with a producer like this, <laughs> if he like this and she like this, if she in a producer, if she in a picture <laughs> with a producer and she, look, you know how everybody point, we do stuff in pictures, we just use our hands. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But if she in a picture like this, <laughs> we can figure it out. Hey, get on your job, my boy. Oh, my goodness. Okay, at the core of it, you are artist. You are recording artist. Right. Hip-hop star. Come on. Oh, uh, yo, how common is that for people to be sleeping with people for beats? I think it's very common. I think a lot of women be like, shh. Men too. Yeah, I don't tell her. Let's be for real. Excuse me? I said men too. Let's it, be for real. It ain't a lot of female producers out there. So well, when you a lot say of male men producers, too, who I, they sleeping it, with? It, oh, so you think just because they men, they, oh, okay. You're going you gonna to play that naive. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> it's, it's male producers out here that'll do something probably, I'm sure. But let's, let's be for real. Let's think about it. It's women who want to get with a guy, right? Already, because they got a career, they trying to pop off, they trying to, they, they trying to hey, rub elbows, and then they can be fun of the guy or his lifestyle. Now she like, well, sure, won't you go on the hoop? Me? He's like, hey man, you know what I'm saying? A little, little trim, I got you. Oh, you gonna do me like that? I mean, I'm just saying, like, yeah, you want the beat? I want the beat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what did you just say? <laughs> you want the meats? I want the meats. <laughs> I mean, I, I can hear it. I, I can clearly hear that. I hear. I can see it happening. I mean, you know, don't look at it as like you gave me that for that. Look at it like we gave each other something. And in return, we celebrated with a good old hot <laughs> night of steamy, passionate sex. I can hear that shit. Come on. Because, see, you really got to ask the women. I'm a man, and I ain't never really propositioned a woman for sex. But you got to ask the women, because the women who are always propositioned for sex, they can tell you a, probably a better scenario of how it happens. Just, you know, in the comments, ladies, give us a scenario how you've been <laughs> <laughs> propositioned for your goods. Leave a comment below. I want to know. For real. And Jock reads all comments. I do. I'm going in now. I am in now. I don't care. On one of these interviews, I gotta say, I gotta, I got a six week long thread. I do. I know if I know it thong tied. He probably like, man, I give up. This man don't care. He going I'm gonna type you, I'm gonna type your eyes out. What? <laughs> <laughs> you be hearing these rappers on their song, they go. <laughs> Yo, before I switch topics, man, essentially, I, wasn't this what R. Kelly was doing? Allegedly. Alleged. Well, I mean, he's convicted. So I, so I don't, I don't know care if it's someone anymore. is convicted. It was alleged, even if you're convicted or free. It's alleged. Well, I think when you're convicted, you don't have to say alleged anymore. You don't, but just but how many people have been released from prison from being falsely accused and that's real falsely no that's real convicted. Yeah. So you know, I myself well, have allegedly, been falsely accused. No, and you're one hundred percent right. You, you know, you're 100 percent right. And uh, I'm not saying that he's not guilty, but, you know, just to be. <laughs> <laughs> well, allegedly, and you're right, um, I, I, I guess this will fall into, you know, how he was moving. You know, you want the beats. And I want the beat. 
I would never. I, I, I would never, man. Let me say this. Mama, if you're watching, Faja, y'all did a great job raising me. I would never proposition a woman for her body parts. I wouldn't do that. I just wouldn't do that. Let me just put that out, though. Okay. Speaking of doing a great job of raising you, I, I saw a clip with your wife talking about she don't want her daughter's dating anybody that look like you <laughs> no, or your son. No, you, <laughs> you walked into that job. <laughs> <laughs> and she said she's rattlesnake serious. That's I don't even know what that means. Nah, man, you know, uh, realistically, man, that was coming off the heels of uh, the reunion of Love and Hip Hop. You know, um, I'm not proud of the way that season ended for me but here here I am um being accused of of dealing with this woman for this whole time period right and there's this text message okay that said come make love to me I don't want to use the word sassy so I'm gonna say jazzy you know how you try to get jazzy at the mouth mm -hmm. well here's the thing she told me that she had been involved with somebody that I know, my friend. I said, my friend? She said, we're not your friend in your friend circle. She said, we're not necessarily your friend circle in your coworker, your colleague circle. I said, oh, shit. Who? She told me. She said, oh, but we friends now. We broke up. I said, oh, okay. Because she basically was giving me her spiel on we could be together. I'm like, I got a lady. So she's like, well, I guess I need to tell you this. So she tells me who the guy is, and I'm like, oh, wow, that close. So then she's like, well, look, I can show you. I'm telling the truth, so you'll never have to doubt it. I ain't mess with nobody else in Atlanta, only him, nobody else you know. She's telling me this. She showed me the phone where her and he and her um, bowed out. They decided they're going to go their separate, separate ways, right? So as I'm reading the message, yeah, this was a this was it was a hard decision, but it was the best thing for both of us. We'll be friends forever this way. This will last forever. I'll always be yours. Blah 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 blah. As I'm sitting there, a text message pop up. Bing. She don't hear. I just happen to look. It's another person that I know that said, "Hey, where yet? Come make love to me." So when I saw that, I was like, "Oh." She's like, "What?" She grabbed the phone. She saw it. She's like, no, wait, I can explain. I was like, yeah, <laughs> whatever. It was like deuces. So she was hitting me around the time when that text message came out. It was around my birthday. She was calling me trying to, you know, hook up. And I was like, yeah, come make love to me. I was being jazzy. I was like, girl, please, you know, I, ain't, I can't rock with you. You don't mess with two cats that I know. And I got a lady. I'm engaged, so I can't do that. But I, I, as a G, I didn't want to be a snitch and say a name on, on that stage. And I was so upset that I would have said the name. So I just went on with it. I said, I'm gonna have to go out. I got I got eight up on this season right here. I said, boy, she she put these allegations on me, but it is what it is. I never thought in a million years she would do that. But anyway, he'll know that. Okay. Um, thanks for clearing that up, Jock. I still didn't your clear mother it up, did ra but Your I, mother did raise you well. Yeah, but it, it, I, I, I ain't wanna, cause I, if I put my boy out there, I think it would've caused some issues. Cause I think somebody he yeah anyway yeah it would cause me issues. So nah, I, we ain't got to do that. I couldn't do, do it that. to him. That was my boy. I was just like, damn. All right. Yo, switch topics for a second. Vlad had a couple of interviews I want to talk to you about. Not sure if you saw them, but one was with Phase on Love, and Vlad made a comment that a lot, a lot of people didn't agree with. Um, went viral. He said that 21 Savage is more relevant than Tupac right now. And he stood on that. People, you know, mistake legendary and relevant, right? Like, for example, you look at, look, look at the rock world. Rolling Stones are a legendary group. Mm -hmm. When they go on tour, they will play in the biggest stadiums on earth. Right, they're not doing little clubs. Like they will go and sell out Wembley Stadium. That they'll go and do SoFi Stadium. Like they'll they'll do huge, huge festivals and and huge venues. Right, which means that they have a serious audience. Right, people yeah. still fuck with their music. But 
if they came out with a new album, I don't think that album would really like shift the culture and really make people like, yo, oh, this is the new style. This is how we go and do things. It's all over the charts and so forth. My point when I said like, yo, Nas, Nas is definitely legendary. You can't take that away from him. But his new album, when you look at the charts, his songs aren't really on the charts like that, like a 21 Savage and Drake album, or, you know, for example, you look at a Taylor Swift. And for me, when I say relevance, I mean that you're competing at the highest level. You're competing with all the other big dogs. That that that's my thing. But that but that's just my opinion when it comes to relevance. Right. But, other people but, feel that relevance is a whole different thing. Now, technically, Tupac been deceased since 1996. Right. Uh oh. You know, Tupac on Spotify gets something like 20 million monthly listeners, and 21 Savage has something like 50 million monthly listeners. Does Vlad have a point? Yes. Hmm. Now, when you bring up Tupac's name, is there relevancy to his name? Of course it is. We could talk about Tupac for days. We're talking about him right now. He brought his name up. He, Vlad said what he said. It offended people. People have an opinion. They spoke out about it. You know, that's what made it go viral. That, that shows you the level of relevancy um, due to his name the weight that his name holds. That's the integrity of his, of his, of his, of his legacy. You know, that's those two words I put together again, integrity and legacy. I said it earlier, <laughs> but that's what that is. But right now, um, at this moment, the kids, if you take a 16 year old kid right now, right now, and ask them to recite some Tupac, they might not even know it. You know what I'm saying? You ask some 21 Savage, you know it's going to be a difference. You can take a 21-year-old, ask him to recite some Tupac. He been dead for 20 years. 20 plus, right? How many years Tupac been dead now? Since 96, so what are we talking? 25? Easy? Easy? That's a long time. What is that, 27? But So right now... Tell me, they're 26, 27. Cause even right now you don't. These kids not quoting Tupac. We'll quote Tupac. You know, us. You know, our age. But the kids who run in the scene for real, <laughs> who make the streams go through the roof, they're not streaming Tupac. They're not. Mm. Okay. Now, now who would I listen? Who would I listen to? If I had to take a trip out of town right now, if I had to ride for the next five hours, who would I listen to? You listen to the pop. I'm gonna listen to pop. I listen to I listen to 21, but I'm gonna listen to pop. Because that's more of my era of what I grew up on. You know, 21 is very relevant right now. He is. You know, the boy made hits. But I don't think Vlad should have caught flack from it. No, that's a valid point. It's a valid point. Yeah. Okay. Vlad sat down with academics. Academics is all through our conversation today. Ain't it? Oh. Um, Y'all yeah, set this really up. Y'all set this up. <laughs> you nah, honest, I mean, you, we told because you led with academic. He's a friend of the platform. I'm like, damn, why you gonna tell me that now if I just went in on this fucking fat face ass <laughs> the last time I was here, bro? Act, you see what they do? Matter of fact, act, you see what y'all do? This is the type of shit act do. That shit right now. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, academics. He made a statement to Vlad. He said the, the new rappers, they signing the same bad deals that the old rappers once signed. Anyway, I, I saw this one guy, and he was just kind of like shitting on the newer rappers. Like, you know what I mean? In terms of, you know, how they were moving in terms of a business sense. And, I'm just, and I just thought about it. I was just like, this is just exactly what the fuck the problem is. All of y'all used to be in the game. Y'all all got fucking you know, taken advantage of by these record labels. But now you expect these new kids who, by the way, no one taught y'all, but y'all didn't also pass what you, you've learned. You expect them to make these great decisions. And then if they don't, you're, you're, you're sitting on a soapbox like judging them. 
in hip hop, we don't have any tutelage system. We don't see yeah. people pass on information. You know what I mean? Like, again, the same deals that are, are, are signed now, I mean, for the most part, like obviously if you come in with a lot of leverage because you got lit on TikTok or something, you have you have a different situation. Like 21 Savage, he owns his masters because he dropped two independent mixtapes that went platinum. You know what I mean? But for the majority of these artists, they're still signing the same exact deal that they've watched TV shows about. Um, some people are still even giving away their publishing. You know what I mean? There's not really much education to this stuff. And it kind of reminds me of the age old saying like, yo, the game is to be sold and not told. Mm -hmm. Where I see people and it habitually happens. I mean, Meek Mill was one of the latest who just started complaining about the label system, right? I've seen Waka Flocka do it previously. Like there's a long list of people who like, they kind of all have the same issues, but it's never at the point of, hey, let's all educate each other or... If we share information, maybe we could use that to try to increase and improve the situations we're all in. And him and Vlad had an argument, basically like, yo, is there any such thing as a bad deal? Is that even real? Yeah. So what's your thoughts on that? It is a bad deal. It is a such thing as a bad deal. Because uh, I give a perfect example. If... You know, we talked about this. Uh, I just seen someone talk about this, and I had this conversation before. You know, right now, if I get a loan for my business, right, I got an idea. I have a business. You give me a loan to start my business. I get it going. Boom, I pay you back. I walk with my business. I walk as the owner of the business, the CEO and all that, right? But the music business, if I get in the music business, all you're doing is giving me a loan. You being a bank. You know what I'm saying? You're giving me a loan to produce my music, uh, distribute my music, right? But once I pay the loan back, I don't own the rights to my music. I don't own my masters. Mm. So that's a bad deal right there for me if you really sit back and be like, wait a minute, hold up. Wait, you gave me the money. I done made you the money back, whew, probably 15 times over. Well, why don't I own my masters? Why don't I, why don't I own my likeness? That's a bad deal. All the way. Show me another business model. Show me another business model like that. Now I can see you saying, yo, we wanna, we wanna, we wanna be in a profit share. We want some equity in your likeness. Okay, that's a better deal. But when I walk away, I've made you your money back that you loaned me, but you still own my masters, you own my likeness. Aha moment. Aha. Yeah, it's crazy. That is always gonna, I'm always say that that's not a good deal. Now, change your life, hell yeah. Put you in a different tax bracket. Hell yeah. You know what I mean? Hey, you out here looking like I'm the man, I'm the man. Hell yeah. But down the line, when it's time to feed your family, they own your masters. And yes, in a sense, a lot of cats are still signing bad ass deals. It happens every day. You got some cats who are in a deal on top of a deal, on top of a deal, on top of a deal. Because they started out with this cat, Putting the money up, it faded. All right, we ain't really working together no more. Shit, go secretly sign a deal over here, boom. That this person got to team up with this company, boom. Now, you under four contracts. If everybody getting, th if everybody getting 5% in four contracts, 20% of your everything gone. If everybody getting 10%, 40% of your shit gone. You, sound, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, at the end of the day, the only way the only way you're not signing a bad contract is if you sign yourself. Jock, you are a very wise man. Well said, my brother. Well said. I like your little analogy. Good job, Jock. It's a bad deal. <laughs> Did you say little analogy? That was a I bad like your, deal. <laughs> it was a bad deal, man. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I like that. All right, um, Chuck D, 
legendary founder of Public Enemy. OG. OG. He calls for a ban on the N-word. We live in a very, very woke society. We live in a very, very social conscious society. People been calling for a ban on the N-word for many, many years. If there's ever a time in history that it has a chance of being banned, it's now. Do you think it'll happen? If it was tagged or deemed as a hate crime or hate speech and it's illegal, then yes, it would absolutely work. Oh, man, you can't say that. Oh, what? You can't say that. Just like right now, you got people who, who don't want to say the J, the J word. They scared Correct. to say the J word because they feel like they're going to get shut down. Or, you know, they're going to lose their endorsements and their money. That's like a band. Like it's like you 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 can't you can't come across with anti-Semitism. Am I saying that right? Okay. Anti-Semitism. Yep. That once you see people st boop, 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 people losing half their shit, that's like a band. <laughs> you, you're gonna have less people talking about it, you know? So if if it was considered hate speech, which they say it is. And a hate crime, if it's a if it's hate speech, then that should make it a hate crime to use the word, right? And when you use the word crime, that means you could be charged for it, right? Then yes. that if you want to solve that, go that route. Go that route. And people definitely stop saying it. Okay, but I gotta ask you, right now. I ain't gonna say they're gonna completely stop saying it, but people will say I, it less. I, I no, I I I understand your point. But that's a that, that's a stretch that is going to be considered illegal, right? No. But we do live in a world. No. Roe versus out. Wade was overturned. If somebody would have told you that was going to be overturned 10 years ago, you would have said that's a stretch. If somebody would have told you Roe versus Wade would be overturned just a year ago, you would have said that's a stretch. Right? Fair well, it's enough. been, it's been, you know, it's it's pretty much at that been about a year. But I'm just saying, before it happened, you say, no, there's no way they're gonna do that. No way. No, no. Well, they stretched it and it happened. So I don't know what to think in today's society. I I hear, I'm like, oh, watch for the hook. Yeah. You know, we live in a world of um diversity, equity, and inclusion. You have to be politically correct with everything you say or else you're offending someone. If you work in a corporate company, pronouns matter. Once upon a time, you can look at a guy and he's a male and you can refer to him as he or him. And that was the proper thing to do. Or if it was a female, you refer to her as a as a her. In this day and age. You can literally be dragged into an HR office because people don't assume I'm a he, her. I want to be referred to as they. So I'm just saying we live in a hyper sensitive world yes. and words matter. So if there's ever a time in history that that word could possibly be, re be removed from uh, everyday speech if you will everyday conversation it, it's now whether it's legal illegal or what have you but um before i let you up out of here you know we got to end this thing on a, a relatively sad note um just came out today i'm not sure if obviously the whole world knows uh ellen degeneres and ellen had her show for many many years Oh. 19 seasons, right? Yeah, 19 seasons. Her DJ, who was with her since 2014, Twitch. DJ Twitch. Twitch. Yeah, DJ Twitch. Everybody knows him as her DJ, but he was her dance partner, crowd motivator. He was a big part of her show. Came out today that he 
passed away by apparent suicide, leaves behind a wife and three children. I, my first and foremost, my hearts go out to him, to his his family, um, his children, and, and everybody who's grieving in this moment. Um, but it is just so, you know, we spoke about mental illness, mental health earlier. You never know, Jock, what people are good. Like, you would think that this man had every reason. He's 40 years old. Yeah. Every reason to live. Yeah. Man, check on your people. If you if you if you're watching this interview right now, just think of, of five people in your head that you love and haven't spoken to in in a while. Check on them. Because people be going through stuff, man. Sometimes people couldn't appear to have everything that that they have ever dreamed of or imagined of having. It, it could look like they got it all, but they're missing that one thing. And that's their happy. That's the understanding of who they are, the understanding of life. You could be missing that one thing, you know what I'm saying? You could be in debt by that one thing, and that very thing would cause someone to want to end it all or take their own life. You know what I mean? And it's, it is very, very, very sad and unfortunate, but we have to understand that it happens. Just as you may be a law-abiding citizen, and you say, I would never go in rob someone, especially not in broad daylight. Or oh, I would never just kill someone because I felt like killing today. Well, the sad truth of nature is this a thing we know as balance. And just as you would never do something like that, or you can't fathom acting out like that, it's someone who's prepared to. So just as you couldn't imagine taking your own life, it's someone who's prepared to. It's someone who's contemplating suicide. It's someone who is on the verge as we speak because they about to lose everything or they think they're about to lose everything. You got somebody that may want to take their life because they want to inflict pain on someone. And we'd be like, why would you want to do that? It happens. It really does. It's a lot of different reasons why someone would take their life. Um, and, and, as a as a person who could never think of being a part of their own demise, we would never understand what drove you to that point. Because I've had some good days, but I've had some bad days too. And I don't think I ever had a day that bad that I would want to end it all. I just, I just, I just don't see it. Um, but my heart, as you said. As you just said, my heart goes out to his family, his children, man, his children, his wife. You know, sometimes people be battling with something for so long and they just feel like this is such a harsh place and they don't know how to find that out. So the, 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 the out for them is that out that comes with a finality. It's, it's done. It's finito. You know, some people are like, I just want to be over with. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to answer to nobody tomorrow. I don't want to be questioned about this, you know. And a lot may come out if if they can. If, if there's a will in place, if he left a suicide letter, you know. Um, but it's like we're seeing it more and more and more and more in today's time, man. And it's been some real different times we've been going through, man. I mean, it's been rough. It's been rough, but. I I I I could never imagine or fathom the thought of taking my own life well you know something jock you 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 never know what people are going through when it is them alone the dark the four walls and just their thoughts you never know what's going through people's mind on the surface this young man was he was successful by every measure. And, and, and I'm not even just talking financially. He had a wife. He had three kids. He, he, he had a steady job for many, many years. Uh, he had celebrity. He had fame. Anybody who's a DJ would love 
to be on a show as watched and revered as the Ellen DeGeneres show for as many years and have her as a personal friend. So on the surface, it looks like this man had it all. Yeah. But you never know what people are going through. So for anybody who's watching this, please, if you're having these types of thoughts, I, you know, I beg you, um, please tell somebody because whether you realize it or not, you affect more lives and there are more people that love you than you can ever imagine. But it's only on the other side that you see that outpouring of love and people saying, I wish he or she would have just talked to me. Trust me when I tell you, there are more people who love you and want to see you here than not. But with that being said, Jock, um, you know, I love these conversations, man. This is another great one. Um, you know, shouts and blessings to you and your family. And, and, and you know, let's do this thing again mm -hmm. in a few more weeks, my brother. Yes, sir. And again, as always, it's been a pleasure. I definitely appreciate you. And uh, shouts out to my boy Harry the Hawk for pulling up on me today. I appreciate that. You know it's love, man. You know it's love, Sean Prayers. I appreciate you, my brother. All love, kid. Continue blessings and success. One.